Game On. Presented by Bank of Hawaii. And a very pleasant good evening from Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center. There you see the line. It is senior night here in Manoa. It's number one Hawaii looking to claim the Big West Conference regular season title as they take on the Tritons of UC San Diego. And this is Game On. Presented by Bank of Hawaii for Rainbow Warrior Volleyball. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us on this special Saturday night, senior night. We'll say goodbye to six seniors at the conclusion of this match. I'm Scott Robbs, along with James Anastasiadis and, of course, Ryan Clay Suji. Last night, these two teams hooked up here at Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center. Hawaii won it in four, but, you know, Ryan, you look at the hitting percentage. We've been so used to Hawaii hitting over 400, 275. Very pedestrian evening for Hawaii offensively. Yeah, not the most efficient night for the Warriors. You can see there those 16 hitting errors. They struggled at times dropping that third set, but Hawaii able to maintain their composure, especially with the blocks. 14 blocks, a season high for the Manoa Roofing Company. All right, let's look at some of the highlights from last night. James, Ryan Kaw, he led the way. Ryan Kaw did an incredible job last night. Had 20 kills on 34 attempts, hitting 270. Not too big of a hitting percentage, but he put the Warriors in a lot of trouble. And as I talked about, 14 blocks for the Warriors, a match, a, a, a season high for the team. Gary Bob's really helping to establish that. And also, the pins did a nice job of really sealing that line and establishing and knowing what the Tritons like to do. And then we have Demetrius Muklias for the Warriors, who's been incredible the past couple of matches, doing what he does best. And he was hitting over blocks a lot of the time. And then Jakob Teller just getting him one-on-one -on -one situations while, as you see, taking advantage of that line last night. He was incredible. All right, let's take a look at the Big West Conference scoreboard on this final Saturday. How about that? In Irvine, they played last night in Long Beach. Long Beach State won in three. Tonight at Irvine, it went five, but it was the beach downing the Anteaters. Other matches, you see uh, UC Santa Barbara beat CSUN as well. And so the conference standings, hope the rest of the standings. But the thing I think a lot of people are curious about is this, the Big West Volleyball Championship. Most of the seedings are set except for one and two of Hawaii wins tonight. They'll be the number one seed. But regardless, Hawaii and Long Beach State will get that by. So the first round matchups are uh, UCSB, UC SD, and the other one is UC Irvine and CSUN. So you look at all of that, the bottom line is for Hawaii, they control their own destiny tonight. They really do, and I think Hawaii taking that number one ranked seed will give them a little bit of an easier path to the championship in the Big West. They're going to have a lot of travel. Unfortunately, the, the tickets to L.A. were sold out. There's a lot of events going on. They're having to fly to Arizona and then fly to L.A. and bus all the way down to Irvine. It's going to be a lot of travel. So having a slightly easier, looking back on the records, first game is going to be very beneficial for Hawaii if they secure the win tonight. Yeah, and it also uh, it goes to show, I mean, you saw those sets, that, uh, that uh, numbers that we saw earlier, the scores that we saw earlier between Long Beach and Irvine going to five. Uh, you know, we could see that again in a semifinal matchup. Hawaii does not want to play Irvine in that semifinal, having to get to the final. So they want an easier path. They want to make sure that they can establish themselves early and, and really uh, face that cut, tough, cut, tougher competition championship round. All right, it gets underway on Thursday. Hawaii won't play till Friday. Reminder, Spectrum Sports will have Thursdays, both matches Thursday and both matches Friday right here on Spectrum Sports. It should be it should be a lot of fun, but Hawaii's got to take care of business. they got to play better. At least you'd like to see them play better tonight than they did last night just to get them you know, on the right path to the uh, Big West. They do, and they just have to play a little bit cleaner. I think last night there was a little bit of misconnections with the setter, a little bit of miscues on the hitting, maybe not the smartest options. Like we said, it's senior weekend. There's maybe a little bit of emotion going through them. But we talked to Jakob last night, and he said that everyone on the team's on the same page moving forward. They know that they need to play their best volleyball these next, hopefully, five matches towards the end of the season. Well, it's always a special night. It's senior night, and of course, the two guys that'll be calling the action are Kanoa and C-Mac, and tell us what to expect, guys. Hey, what's up, Scott? Yes, next to Chris McLaughlin, I'm Kanoa Leahy and C-Mac. First off, we have to look back at last night because that was mind-blowing. Two sets in, you had a UC San Diego team that was out hitting, out digging, out blocking Hawaii, and yet the Rainbow Warriors, they were the team that were up 2-0. You know, in all matches we've called this year, 
mm, we have that break between sets two and three. We analyze the stats. We have never said, oh, Hawaii's up 2-0, even though they're being out dug, <laughs> out blocked, and out hit. Crazy night. And I know Coach Brad Rostrader from uh, UC San Diego was very frustrated as well because his team was really playing well, yet they were down 0-2. Yeah, it's interesting. Talking with Brad Rostrader, and there you see him in the shot. It didn't seem like any of that was much of a surprise. He felt like the, the match we played over the course of the entire evening, that was us. And he didn't even necessarily point out the novelty of the fact that in that first set, they were 10 for 10 to start offensively. Uh, he feels confident that this offense tonight again can perform at a high level and give them a chance to win. Yeah, he seemed very confident. You see how happy he is right there? He's smiling <laughs> in, the, in the huddle. He's got these guys loose and ready to play. They have, you know, their, their seating is already determined no matter what happens tonight. So they're going to play, I think, free and and uh, they're, they're going to feel off. They'll be feeding off the energy of this crowd and this will be a big crowd, Kanoa. Everybody shows up that doesn't show up all year long. They'll show up for senior night just to see the festivities. Well, the team that needs to win tonight obviously is Hawaii. You mentioned the other seeds pretty much locked in. It's just about Hawaii and Long Beach State now in those top two seeds in the Big West Conference Tournament. So let's talk adjustments. Night two is always about adjustments. Do you anticipate any tweaks on either side here? I think UCSD is probably going to to have to do something with Chaz Galloway. I think they'll start taking his line, that little cut shot he has back down the line. I think they'll take that away, invite him to hit cross court into some of their great diggers that are cross court. Uh, that's a major adjustment I think UCSD will make. And hopefully um, they will cut down on their errors. They had 52 yeah. errors last night, averages of 13 errors per set. You've got to be around 10 at least to win in this league. Yeah, Brad Rostretter, uh, ever the uh, analytics believer, he says that last night we were 9% worse or 9% less efficient yeah. from the service line. So he gets very precise yeah. when it comes to some of that data, and they're hoping to be a little bit better uh, here this evening, which should make for a fun senior night match. All right, we'll see you at first serve. Let's send it back over to the corner crew. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Well, yes, it is senior night. Six guys will say aloha, kanai akana, ko. Hoagland, Philip Humbler, Devin Johnson, Demetrius Muklius, and Jakob Tella. And let's find out more about the special six in this senior class. This senior class has taught me, uh, taught me a lot, you know, just growing up and how to be more professional in my not only volleyball career, but when it comes to school and just relationships, they, they've taught me how to, you know, kind of turn into a man because they were, I kind of looked up to them in some aspects because they were like a year above me. This senior class, I think it means, it means and it helps so much uh, the team and it means so much to the fans. You know, you have people like Jacob, Philip, Cole, and Devon that have been here for so long in the program. And then you have Dimi, who's only been here for two years, but he still has made such a big impact. Um, and I think it's a very special senior class uh, that helped establish the culture of the team. And I think that we've all learned uh, how to carry that on in the next years. There's never been a group that's won two titles. Like that is, like you just start there. Um, the winning percentage uh, in their career is you know, got to be over 90%, which is unheard of, you know, for decades in men's volleyball. If you finished above 500, you were really good. Um, and this group has figured out how to win and um, and does it a lot. Uh, and great students. I mean, Jakob Telly's first team academic All-American. Kanat Yakana is the Elite 90 Award winner. These are uh, impressive young men in every part of their lives. And um, like I said, hard to quantify really what they've done, but it's a lot and uh, they will be missed. say what brought to you by Heineken and uh, let's start off with you Ryan what, what do you have to say about these six seniors? Well, I mean, I think you look at all of them, they all had different paths to get here to the University of Hawaii Manoa, but each of them contributing in their own right. And I think you heard it best from the underclassmen in Chaz and Spiro saying uh, they learned a lot. And that's really what this program is all about, is uh, building leaders for the next generation. And this senior class has not only proven to be able to be successful on the court, but they've really instilled that leadership qualities to the next generation of Warrior volley Volleyball players that will be coming up. Yeah, I think the senior class has been huge just for the program in general. Like they said, a lot of them have been here five, if not six years. 
It's a very long time to be through the program and through a very big transition in the program's history. They have continued that legacy. They have been the ones who have secured two national championships and they've grown. They've learned from the past and they're passing it on to the future. And this class is just something special. Yeah, very special and maybe the, the most special. Well, you can't point out one guy, but Jakob Tellis had a heck of a career. You don't want to go anywhere because when we come back, Ryan sat down with uh, Jakob. Actually, they went outside as well. You're going to learn some things you probably never knew about Mr. Tella. Back inside Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center, Hawaii, UCSD. Right there, you see Jakob Tella. And Ryan, you got a chance to really, I think, let the people know who the real Jakob Tella is. Yeah, you know, we've seen a lot of athletes come through the University of Hawaii who've really adopted the culture and the people, but maybe none more than Jakob Tella. In ancient Hawaiian Olelo Noel, or Proverbs states, a fisherman of the shallow sea uses only a short line. A fisherman of the deep sea uses a long line. You will only reach as far as you aim and prepare yourself to reach. This philosophy has become a theme for Jakob Tella, both as a fisherman and as an athlete. Ocean has always been a part of my life. So I grew up right next to the ocean in Norway, so I always had a connection to the ocean, and during the summers, my family, they would take me fishing. It came as no surprise that Jakob would attend the only university in the country completely surrounded by water. The access to fishing was also an added benefit. But it was perhaps the person he became and the people that he met that surprised him the most. Hawaii was always a dream and there was no other choice or another place I wanted to be. The first day I got here, I felt the Aloha spirit and everyone took care of me so well. So just, I knew that Hawaii was a place that I would call home. It's definitely changed a lot about me. Just from like speaking to my teammates in, in Pigeon and getting all the local grinds, local food and just going cruising with, the, with my brothers, that's been, it's been a big part of who I am now. He is someone who really has embraced living in Hawaii, so he's, you know, he's very comfortable here. You know, this will be a, a home to him for the rest of his life. The people is what had the biggest impact on me in my life. So I won't even, I won't miss the beaches and the rainbows and the beautiful mountains as much as the people. Hawaii has given me everything, so just giving back what I can is something that I want to do. Tella has given Hawaii fans two national championships and guided the Warriors to a number one ranking for the majority of this, his senior season. Despite injuries and setbacks in his career, Tella has persevered, etching his name in the history books as one of the all-time greats. The road is just not always, it's not a perfect line. It goes up and down and it's just about embracing those downs periods to grow and really just focus on growth and how you can become better as a person, how you can come back stronger. Really hard to measure and because um, he's done so much. You know, he, he really is in the conversation of uh, not only one of the best players in our program, but one of the best players in uh, collegiate volleyball ever. Jakob Tella continues to cast a long line aiming and reaching for more in an already decorated career. But more than the accolades, Tella hopes his legacy is not tied to championship trophies, but as a true representative of the people of these islands. The fact that you're playing for not only your school and your teammates, but you're playing for the entire state. And I don't think there's any other school in the U.S. that can say the same. I think I want to leave behind seeing, seeing one that really just embraces the culture, and embraces the people the most beyond anything else, that people are the really most important thing in life and inspiring others around me. And Jakob Tella has become a fan favorite, but really when you get to know him, when you spend time talking to him, he is as true of a local brother as anyone out here. He may not have Hawaiian blood, he may not have graduated from a Hawaii high school, but he is local through and through and beyond playing professionally. Jakob says he wants to move back here to Hawaii and call this place his home. He's fallen in love with the people in the place, and uh, I think Hawaii fans have definitely benefited from having him lead this team. He's truly been just one big inspiration to a lot of the younger generations. I coach a lot and you, his name comes up more than anyone's out here. And just how humble he is, as good as he is as a player, really speaks to the personality and the person that he, he is. Yeah, I think the, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, it's just been incredible to see his journey through the program. I got I got a chance to play with Jakob. We were on the same side, on the A++ side for two years in a row. We had that connection, and it's just been very cool, even after I graduate, for him to continue that legacy 
coming and stepping and filling in for Joe Worsley was incredibly hard. Incredible setter, set a lot of records here at Hawaii. And he's just been able to continue that legacy and give back in so many ways that a lot of people might not even know of. You know, Ryan, I think a lot of people probably don't remember, but in 2021, at least at the beginning of the season, he was in a battle with Brett Short for that setting position. Yeah, he really had to battle his way back. And he says some of those adversities and some of the things that he's faced and those challenges really helped to develop him to the player that he was. He went back home during that time and really trained hard. Uh, but more than anything else, he said he just wanted to make the people of Hawaii proud. And I think at the core of everything that he does, he just wants to represent this state as best as he can. I also think Hawaii people need to be forever indebted to Henrik Mole, former yeah, exactly. Rainbow Warrior, because he's the guy that recommended Jakob to the coaching staff, and the rest is obviously history. So Jakob and the rest of the Rainbow Warriors getting prepared for this senior night matchup. It's Hawaii, UC San Diego. When we come back, we'll break down the rematch. Well, there you see the throngs of fans making their way into Simplify Arena Stand Sheriff Center. We just got word that it is officially a sellout here on this senior Saturday night, second sellout of the season. And the fans have always been a part of the program. When you talk to the players, they really appreciate the support. They're the reason that we kind of go as hard as we do and we train the way we do and we go out there and work as hard as we do. I mean, the energy that they bring, you know, every single night, uh, even when there's, you know, maybe 4,000 people to 8,000 people, it's like, you can't really tell the difference because they're so loud. And just being out there and having the support of that many people, it, it helps, you know, makes our job kind of easier because we can just focus on playing and we know that they'll bring the energy if we don't have that. We love our fans because they even show up in games that are not supposed to be that strong, right? So we had nights against teams that there were clean sweeps and easier. Um, and we still had a pretty full arena, so I think this shows how much, uh, how much respect there is uh, from our fans, and we really thank them for that. It's a lot every night. We're talking about the fans in attendance, the the energy in the community, um, fundraising. <laughs> I mean, everything. It's just been, um, it's been unbelievable. It really has, and it. I've said, and I believe it with all of my heart that we win not for the fans, because of the fans. All right, James, tell us all about the guys that stood out last night for UCSD. We have Ryan Kaw, who's been incredible for San Diego. He had 20 kills last night, hitting 244. Like I said, not the best efficiency, but he did a lot of damage for Hawaii. Then we have Garrison in the middle, who had nine kills, hitting 400, and added six blocks, which really helped to slow down Hawaii's offense. And then Schellinger. He had nine kills, hitting 125. Again, not the most efficient, but he added two blocks, five digs, and had one service ace for them. All right, let's take a look at the season stat comparisons. Hawaii tops in every category except service errors, where UCSD has a little bit of an edge. In fact, last night, they had quite a few uh, service errors. How about for last night, Hawaii's leaders, Ryan? Well, you can see here the usual suspects, especially Dimitri Smoothly, is there, 241. Actually, a lower hitting percentage than what we've been seeing on recent nights out. He started hot kind of struggled in the middle but really came through at the end and Chaz Galloway continues in that upward trajectory hitting 391 and Cole Hoagland also having a steady night five kills hitting 833 for the night you know you look at last night's match I thought UCSD they're really scrappy they did take a set off away but tonight with the energy senior night what do you expect is going to happen this evening I expect San Diego to come out strong again. This is a team in the past. They have taken down this number one team. They play very well against the Hawaii, and I think a lot of that is due to they play very relaxed and loose. They have nothing to lose, and they just have fun with it. But it's going to be very hard in front of a sold-out crowd to keep that same emotion and energy like they did last night because everything's going to be in favor for Hawaii tonight. Well, I think one of the things that helped them last night was just how steady they were. They didn't have a hitting error. I think after the first four, they were like 14 for 14 at the beginning, and so they really played a steady game overall, and they really just want to continue that and carry that momentum. If they're able to sustain that will be the other thing. I think Hawaii will be playing with a little bit more energy tonight, obviously because of the surroundings and the atmosphere, uh, but we'll see what happens. Hey, the three of us will be back in intermission. A reminder, we will carry senior night in its entirety, so Kick back, relax if you're at home. It should be a fun night of volleyball. Coming up next, Hawaii, UCSD, Kanoa, and CMAC with the call of the action. And out 
Inside hitter, 6'3", Junior, from San Diego, California, number one, Jazz Galloway! Atley Barrow, 6'2", Junior, from Newport Beach, California, number four, Brad Schuh! At middle blocker, 6'4", Junior from Waimanalo, Oahu. Number seven, Cole Hogland! At opposite, 6'6", six, six, Junior from Souffle, Greece. Number 11, Dimitrios Middle blocker, 6'7", Junior from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Number 21, Guilherme Vox. And outside hitter, 6'4", Junior from Mea Spirni, Greece. Number 23, Speedos Hakka. And Dad Sutter, 6'6", senior, from Tonsberg, Norway. Floor captain, number 10, Yako Tella! The volunteer assistant is Chad Eastman. Assistant coach, Ku Pono Faye. Associate coach, Milan Zarkovic. Head coach for your Rainbow Warriors, Charlie Way. Service aces and a season high 14 blocks. The Rainbow Warrior volleyball team overcame the potent offense of unranked UC San Diego to take the first of a two match weekend series. A victory tonight will secure a share of the regular season Big West title for the Rainbow Warriors and a top seed in next week's conference tournament, a sweet send off for Hawaii's six seniors. Coming up, the Hanaho rematch and Big West regular season finale. The Trenton's of UC San Diego and the number one Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. And with that, we welcome you inside Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center. Kanoa Leahy sitting next to Chris McLaughlin. c -Man. take us through the Kaiser Permanente. Keys to the match. UCSD, they've got to reduce their errors. Last night, the Tritons averaged 13 errors per set. They need to be under 10 for a win. And for Hawaii, this one's for the seniors and the fans. Players should draw plenty of motivation from these two sources tonight. An emotional night for sure, especially for that guy, Jakob Tella, and the rest of the seniors who will be honored at the conclusion of this match. It is officially a sellout in Manoa. 13th all-time sellout in the history of this Hawaii program in this arena as Jakob's first serve goes long. The Hawaiian Financial FCU starting lineup scrolling at the bottom of your screen. No surprises here. Both coaches going with the same first rotation as they did last night. Hawaii would win it in four, improving to 25 and two on the year. They're eight and one in the Big West Conference. Triton's falling to eight and 15, two and seven in the league as Guilherme Voss hit 569 on the year, is able to pound that one home. Couldn't quite find his groove in the normal way last night. And the connection really wasn't smooth between Tella and Voss last night, but how about that connection right there? Great pass from. Uh, Brett Schuert to get things started. Yeah, had three kills, hit 125, but also had six blocks, so he made up for perhaps some of the less than standard efficiency offensively as Josh Schellinger puts it down on his first swing. This is a UC San Diego team that came out like gangbusters last night. They were 10 for their first 10 
10 kills on their first 10 attempts to start the match. They had 600 in the first set last time. Who does that? Meanwhile, Schellinger goes into the net, and that gets a rise out of the crowd. I mean, if you're the Tritons here, you know, last night it was a pretty raucous crowd for sure, but this is the next level here in front of a sellout, and it is going to be high volume. What do you think is going through their mind? I think there's a lot of adrenaline going through their bodies is what's going on. Oh, Hoagland will play the overpass. Tella goes outside. Chad Galloway gets it down. 6-3 junior from San Diego, California. Had 11 kills, hit 391 last night to go along with eight digs and three blocks. He was sensational. He really was. I had an idea they were going to take his line away. He had so many successful line shots last night. Sure enough, they took it away. And what does he do? This goes cross court. Gets another kill. With three serving two. Guillermo Voss putting a little more velo on it these days. Ryan Cobb blasts it off the block. And now uh, Ryan Cobb is the top hitter for the Tritons. 3.87 kills per set. He's hitting 219, but they will go to him early. They will go to him often. Swung 45 times last night, had 20 kills to lead UCSD. He was really good for the first set. Remember, he had nine kills in the first set. Double his normal average. Nick Rigo with the serve. Good pass there by Spiros Hawkins. Middle set, Cole Hoagland dug up there by Rigo. So back row set, it's Berkeley Miesfeld off the block. So the save there by Brett Sheward. Backside, Demetrius Mukles. First court and in. And the top hitter for Hawaii gets his first put down of the match. As you take a look at first year head coach for the Tritons, Brad Rostratter, who was named the head coach in October of 2022. Replaced Kevin Ring, who was there for 17 years. He was not surprised by the performance of his team in that first set last night. He felt like last night's match was indicative of the kind of match this team plays. But that was something that Hawaii did exceptionally well. They dealt a bunch of aces out of the deck, and Dini does it right here. Eight aces last night to UC San Diego's three. Hawaii only had nine errors, served in at a 90% clip. You're going to win a lot of volleyball games if you do that. Lopez now with 31 aces. That ties Spiros Hakas for the team lead. Sends it into the twine, though, on the ensuing serve. Carly Wade is the head coach for Hawaii in his 14th year. He's got him to 25 victories. And had some very powerful words after the match last night talking about just how important the community is to this team and how important in turn this team is for the community and we're seeing it in the turnout here tonight here's james uh, ryan ka with the roll shot and then tella turns it on too a little high cheddar but it's returned good dig there by Schellinger. tella getting the swing on the opposite side are you serious As they get along in the season, Shuey sets the ball up to Tella instead of going to his left side hitter, Callaway. <laughs> Not good there, Andy. How about that? We see a lot of those. Get in line. That's right. Now the serve by Galloway goes into the net. You know, Charlie Wade has been steadfast in saying Jakob Tella, who did play some opposite uh, in earlier stages of his volleyball career, could be a Division I opposite hitter if he wanted to. Absolutely. We saw that stroke just moments ago. Here's Ryan Caldeser. Good pass there by Shuey. So Tella high and away as Hakas dug up by Ka, tight to the net with Joust up there, pinballed around and bumped over the net. Hakas with the swing. That was menacing. There's no way Hakas is going to pass that ball up and run a play. He was going to finish the rally on his own. A Hakas hammer to put Hawaii up two here in the first. At eight kills, hit a buck 54 last night, did have a couple of aces. Wasn't his typical night as far as the output is concerned. No, no, 154, not his normal percentage. Schellinger able to play the block to his advantage, and the Tritons back within one. Schellinger, Schellinger last night also having a bit of an off night. He hit 125. Normally, as you see, he hits around 250 on the year. Tella going middle, it's Voss. Didn't get all of it, he got enough of it. For the 6'7 junior from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. 
They're able to get it down for another Hawaii point. So you see part of the game plan, obviously, is let's, let's set the middle early and often. So we set up those outside pin hitters for some one-on-one -on -one situations. Jakob to serve, made sure he got it in that time. Good pass there by Ka. Here's Niesfeld. Access denied. Boss jumping up next to Spiros. With the Greek national team, with the Brazilian national team. It's an international block, you could say. Yes, <laughs> that is. Pulls the setter, Gabe Dyer, off the net. The block there on Schellinger, but they'll play it back to him again. Second swing, block back again. Covered by Evan Boyle. Back row, it's caught. Hit shot. And you had some divers in the area, but you saw Demi trying to play it off of the block attempt, and it results in a kill for Ryan Cobb. So nifty. Yeah, he, he hits so many balls over the course of the night. Last week, remember, he hit 66 against Santa Barbara. And last night, he hit 45 balls. So he's got a variety of shots, an array of uh, clubs in his bag, you could say. Has played well in this building as well in past matches, as well as past Big West Conference tournaments that were hosted here. Tella, off of one leg, sets up Nucleus, and we got a net violation against the Tritons. So Hawaii gets the kill, gets the point. And they push the lead out to three here, 10 serving seven. Brad Rostratter came over from Vanguard University in California, where he was the NAIA Coach of the Year, two-time Golden State Athletic Conference Coach of the Year. Oh, what a serve there by Hawkins. Better pass by Schellinger, and they're able to convert it in the middle to Nick Rigo. That was a pretty brilliant first touch there. This is a great pass right down the line. Schellinger put it up to run the money where they can run a play. Jump serve coming from Schellinger. Pass by Hawkins on target. Nucleus. Didn't get the full swing on it, so here come the Tritons. Kyle, roll shot, diving save by Galloway. Hawkins will try to time it from the back row. And now the Tritons in transition. Middle set, dumped over by Regal. Diving save, Shuey. Bump save, Galloway up the elevator step. It's just bigger than he go over the top. OTT. He's just got an extra gear. He's got an extra. He makes the save on it. Keep the rally alive. Let's watch how high he goes up. Yeah, he does. He goes up and over, hitting from the penthouse. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's his office space. He's up there on the top floor. That's where he operates. Yeah. There's Keone Finn now in the serve. He had an ace last night. Forces a pass tight to the net. Galloway able to field the joust. Now Mucleus quick approach. Good cover there by Finn. High ball set. Galloway roll shot dug up there by Kaw. Back row, it's Miesfeld, oh, through the block and out. Earthly Miesfeld, the 6'5 redshirt senior from La Jolla, California, played in parts of just the first two sets last night. Had one kill, one ace, one block, before ultimately being replaced by Josh Stewart. Now he's got one kill, one error, and three digs. Average is 1.6 kills per set. Pass goes over the net. Free swing there for Dyer, but he missed the floor. Oh, a golden opportunity, but Gabe Dyer, the setter, wasn't able to find the target. Dyer, an amazing club player, played for Belbo Bay Club, uh, and won three goals. Even got the MVP in one of the national tournaments. Yeah, his coach over there at Balboa Bay, Bay, his coach now, Brad Rostrader. What a pass again by Schellinger. Kahl blocked, bumped back over, and then Paul Holden punctuates the sequence. Hawaii seems pretty revved up here, C-Mac. Yeah, and again, they're doing it, like I said, my keys to the game. They're doing this for the fans and for the seniors. Plenty of adrenaline to go around. Nine kills right now for Hawaii. No errors. They're hitting 500. 13 serving nine, Mucleus into the twine. 
something that Hawaii was so good at last night was serving effectively without accumulating too many errors. Had eight aces to nine errors already here in this match. Four errors to one ace. A little, a little uncharacteristic. The float serve there, fielded by Galloway. Bump set, here's Chaz down the line, missed it wide. So a couple of unforced errors providing a pair of points for UCSD, and they're within a pair on the scoreboard. That's one thing that Charlie Ray keeps close track of. How many errors his team makes? Tella, back row, it's Hawkes. And just too much power behind that swing. Even though the block got the touch, there was not enough resistance as Spiros gets his second kill. He keeps his elbow so high and snapped at such a high level, hitting at the peak of his jump. Now Chaz to serve, 14 serving 11. Oh, that's an overpass there by the libero Boyle. And Spiros Hawkes says thank you very much. And Hawaii gets the 15 first in set one on senior night. Welcome back. You don't want to miss a second of the action, so watch Spectrum Sports on the go. The Spectrum News app has the local sports you love and the news and weather that matter most to you. Download today on the App Store or Google Play. Well, what do you think so far? What you've seen from the home team here, C-Max? A little bit of a flip of the switch as to who's siding out better. Last night it was UC San Diego just ripping it up, hitting like 750. Tonight, Hawaii hitting uh, 470 to... San Diego's 235. Good sprawling save there by Demi, and then Hawkes sends it over. UCSD will play it back. Schellinger will set up Cobb, and he tries to avoid the block and just blasts it into the Hawaii bench. And they're going to call a touch. And so give the kill to Cobb. He wasn't aiming anywhere near the floor. He was just trying to get a fingernail, and that's what he did. I think he got a fingernail. Actually, the linesman and the R1 kind of has both Saw the touch. So 12 serving 15. That one crawls over the net. Tella will joust up there. Bumps it back over to the Triton side. Middle set and the block is there. Hoagland saying hot rolling solo style. All by himself. Look how he reads. He could not. He didn't just go straight up. He goes straight up and then has his arms drift to where he thinks the ball is going to be attacked. His ninth solo stuff of the season. The guy who will celebrate senior night this evening, as is this guy, the server. And what a serve it was! Setting up his mate, Spiros Hakas. You see the first person he hugs? Kalei Akana made that serve. Just as good as an ace. Timeout, Tritons. Hawaii by a handful. Welcome back. Let's go inside the numbers presented by Long Drugs. The number is 112 and 12. That's the career record to this point for Hawaii. And it's senior class from 2019 through this season, a 903 winning percentage. This is a senior crew uh, that has traversed the most successful run in the history of University of Hawaii men's volleyball. Pretty impressive, I'm telling you. On the game on show, they talk, they, some of the younger players talk about what this senior class meant to them. A lot of it had to do with leadership and culture, role model. Should be a good, good example for the community. And they play some pretty good volleyball. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, they got a couple of banners hanging up for their efforts yeah, as well. That's right. Here's Josh Ewart entering the match a little earlier at least in this serving situation than what we saw last night. You see seven service aces on the season. Big arm for this guy. But the net slowed it down a bit. Tella goes middle to Voss. Diving save by Ka. That was splendid. Swing by Schellinger off the block and out. Ryan Ka is doing some dandy work in all areas here this weekend and always with an ear-to-ear -ear smile. Yeah. Some pretty nifty defense there. Quick hands. Good defense. Here's a good touch on the block. Nice back row, keeping it alive, and then that was Kaw. Pass by Galloway, tight to the net, one hand set to Voss. Couldn't get a real swing on it, so back row, it's Kaw. Blocked and rolled. Return to sender by G. Voss, who got the gist of it. 
And for those who missed last night, G. Voss is now officially 23 years and one day old. That's right, celebrated his birthday yesterday. Tella. Swing by knee spell, blocked back, and then bumped over the net. Tella gets under it, goes cross court to Hawkes. Try the tool to block, nothing doing. Hawkes a second crack at it, and he cracks it for sure, but Kyle retrieves it. He gets the set in the back row, wrist away, shot misses wide. No touch up front, and Hawaii gets the point. They get to 19, and that will prompt another UC San Diego timeout. Hawaii hitting in the 400 range, 393 to be exact, compared to 125 for UCSD. Big difference from, from yesterday where UC San Diego dominated in that category. They hit 600 that first set last night. Hawaii seems to be lining up their block better. I, 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 I think that uh, UCSD also might be trying a little bit too hard to, to bury the ball rather than hits smarter shots. Well, let's send it over to Ryan Calais Suji. Ryan, what do you got? Hey, thanks, Kunal. Well, here on the San Diego sideline, coaches staff continuing to huddle together to kind of figure out and strategize a game plan. But earlier in the last time out, they really told them teams to just be patient. They're pretty happy with the steadiness of this team and the way that they're playing, saying they're playing great defense, uh, but they're just trying to do too much offensively. They're telling their team to be patient, that if Hawaii digs up the ball, to not necessarily go for a full kill on the first swing, but to take their time and be patient. They believe that Hawaii, this momentum that Hawaii has is going to calm down and that they just want their team to level out and continue to play steady. Back over to you guys. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Your thoughts, C-Mac? Pretty good advice. That's kind of what I was saying about shot selection, especially in the middle of rallies. Look at the Kanai clan over there. Even have the Okina represented. You got to love that. Oh, yeah. Well, here you go. Kanai Okina. There's nothing like seeing you know, this place. Well, there's 5,000 people where there's 10,300. It's always a celebration. It's a different vibe. And, and we've seen some huge crowds. This is the second sellout this season. But this is still a different vibe. There's, there's a more emotional, stirring type of energy here in the building. And I imagine during introductions for the guys who are going to be celebrated at the end of the evening, that must have felt terrible. As Tella sends it a little bit long on the serve. Unusual for him to have two service errors at, at this stage of the game. Usually he's got two or three aces this, at this stage of the game. Great story on Jakob during our game on portion of the broadcast. Ryan caught up to him while he was going fishing. Yeah. Talked about his embracing of the local culture. And that's happened across the board. As G. Voss lays into another one, he's got three kills. That was a perfect nectar put up by Jakob on that occasion. And now Spiros Hakas back to serve. Yeah, when Tella and Voss are connecting, it's really hard to stop. Hakas, good serve. Up straight up in the air by Ka. Outside, it's Schellinger. It goes long. Was there a touch, though? No touch is called. Brad Rostrader thought there was one. I think he's going to challenge this. It would be, as it currently is called, as an out ball and a point for Hawaii, the largest lead for the Rainbow Warriors in this first frame. But we'll wait to see if this gets confirmed. As you take a look at Dixon Chun, he's the lower referee, the R2. Diana Hess across the way, atop the ladder. She's the R1. And Kevin Chun and Randy Rubinall, the two line judges. Ooh, he might have got that, Mucleus's left pinky. That left think? hand, that, that outside of the left hand of Demetrius Mucleus, I'm with you. It seemed like an awfully small crevice yeah. to hit the ball through if it exactly. didn't hit any of those fingers. Exactly. Yeah, I'm with you on this one, but you know what? Our opinion, and this is probably a really good thing, really does matter. not count. <laughs> If I were Dixon Chung, I would give a touch and the point to UC San Diego. 
just one man's opinion. I'm going to take a few more looks at this. But here's an example of where if, if Mucleus did touch it, he's almost going to keep the game going. Then you just say, hey, Dixon, I touched it. Let's just keep playing. Yeah, yeah. Because Hawaii has a certain rhythm going exactly, right now. That, exactly. that's, that's an interesting take. Because in, in many ways for UC San Diego, whether they win or lose this challenge might not be as important as the fact that they're throwing a little bit of a wrench into that exactly. aforementioned ri the rhythm exactly. of Hawaii. Yeah, you could have gone out from some garlic fries and nachos <laughs> during this particular replay. I'm imagining those concession stand lines are a little too long right, right now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but he did, as you alluded to, call the touch. So it goes from 21-15 to 16 serving 20. So you and I keep our challenges now? <laughs> yes, that's right. For those who don't know, you get three challenges for each team. Oh my gosh. That was a round me double. Off the top of the wall. The toss was a little out in front there for Shelly. Can you explain the challenge rule for those people who might be watching for the first time tonight? Yeah, so three challenges for each side. If you win the challenge, you keep it. If you don't, you lose it. And if it goes to a fifth set, you get one extra. You can't have more than three at one time. Oh, what a third. Voss drops it off of a table. And here's a guy who's been fold serving most of his career here at the University of Hawaii. He's come up with this jumper that's really pretty deadly. Largest lead here of set one for Hawaii, and now a substitution coming in. Sam Warren saw a little bit of action last night. Enters the match, his boss. And he misses far side. The development of Guilherme Voss's serve is another storyline here in 2023. He and, he and uh, Cole Hoagland, I think, did not want to be pulled out of the back row. So the two of them worked very hard on their serves over the summer. Pretty good serve here, Rigo, but it goes long. Uh, the service error starting to bite the Tritons again as it did last night. And Hawaii is up 23-17, and it's Demetrius Muklius back to serve. Already with an ace. It's all about the toss. Good serve again. Gets him out of system a bit. High ball set goes to Ka, and he's still able to go off the hands and out. He has such an assortment of shots. It is hard to deal with, even if you're keying in on him with all three blockers. Exactly. He can, he can hit for power, and he can hit for location like that. High hands. Teller goes to Galloway. Good cover there off the block by Jakob. So Spiros goes to Chaz. He goes off the hands and out. So the two former club teammates at Wave Volleyball Club in the San Diego area, Chaz Galloway and Ryan Ka getting kills for either side. And here is Philip Humler. No, is this standing up for, for game point or is this a standing ovation for Philip Humler? You call it. I think you got to say a little bit of both for sure. I what this agree. guy has gone through in his career, and for it to be culminating here, at least symbolically tonight, so good to see him out there. Aloha ball in set one, and he serves it into the twine. He was going for it, and Charlie's going to keep him in. Dealing with a rare illness that caused inflammation in his joints. At 105 degree temperature. There was concern that he would ever be able to do anything physical or active again, let alone play Division I volleyball. As the serve by Ka goes long, and Hawaii takes set one as the crowd on its feet roars in a joyous ovation. Hawaii takes it 25-19. Set two coming up. Welcome back. It's time now for the Hawaii Honda Dealers highlight reel, and we're looking at Spiros Hakas at a dare I say subpar performance, at least by his incredible standards last night. Statistically, eight kills, hit 154. Did have a couple of aces, but tonight, four kills, no errors, hitting 400. He's got an assist, a dig, a pair of blocks, and he went back to his server right there to give Kanaya kind of a big hug after the overpass led to another one of his slams. 
Spinners is having some fun out there, Jerry, that's for sure. Playing some really good ball ball, and he's passed the ball perfectly seven times. About half of the passes, the boys he's passed, had 15 passes. He's passed seven of them perfectly. Well, this crowd turning up the volume knob, being challenged on the big screen overhead to make some noise. And uh, they were screaming at the top of their lungs here in between sets one and two. Again, Hawaii needing to win tonight to secure the top seed in next week's Big West Conference Tournament to be played in Irvine. Long Beach State was down 0-2 against Irvine at Brent Event Center, came back with the reverse sweep to win that match, because you know Long Beach State isn't gonna give Hawaii anything. They're gonna make Hawaii earn it. And so they did their part, and now the Rainbow Warriors under the gun to try to see if uh, they can also come through with a victory to secure that top seed. I watched the, uh, that UC Irvine game this afternoon, especially the last set, the fifth set. And they had a chance to win it. Just came up short. Set two underway. That one dug up off the shoulder of Jim Garrison to the Hawaii side. Here's Hawkins, three blockers up. The cover there by Tella. So Schuert sets up Hawkins again. And how about that wrist away, thin slice of bread. What a smart play to his first shot. He had three blockers up. So he, he didn't attack it with the block, you know, with a lot of vigor. He just tapped it in the block, got a, re, got a uh, reposition, and got an attack again. And that, the second time, he just sliced it down in area four, inside the three-meter line. What a shot. Yeah. Well, difficult to do. Brad Rossretter thinking it's so difficult that it didn't happen. He's challenging the in-out call. Mm. Right challenge, that's right. This happens right in front of the R1. That's going to be an over. Oh, yes, that is out. Good challenge by Ross Trader. Interesting. You got a line judge and the R1. Neither of them called it out, but that Ross Trader from across the way, seeing at least a little bit of space between the ball and the line. All right, C-Mac, we'll put the pressure on you again. What's going to be the ruling here? That's an out ball. It's going to be an over rule. It's going to be a we're going to flip the switch on this one and give the point to UC San Diego. That's my prediction. All right, survey says. Ball is out. So a successful challenge there for Brad Ross Schrader. Instead of five kills, Sparrows Hawkins has his first hitting error of the evening. Why only one hitting error in the entire first set. 14 kills, only one error. Yeah, hit 419 compared to 192 for the Tritons. Here's Galloway from the back row. And it's going to be a back row attacker violation. I'm going to say that Galloway stepped on the line. And the player is looking back at Charlie Wade, and he confirms, yeah, just by a skosh. Yeah. So a couple of gifted points here to UCSD to start set two. Tell on two. He's got a couple of slam down kills already in this match. He's also moving the ball around to other people. I mean, he's got Galloway with three kills. As we see him swing there. Uh, Mukles has got two. Voss has got three. Hawkins has got four. Nice distribution. Just a special player. That was a special diving pass by Boyle. But the block was just as special. Voss next to Dini saying, uh uh. And the roof towels. Coming out. And you see the ball, pretty good hand, hands right there, turning the ball into the court. You gotta love Evan Boyle, though, man. That guy's really passing. Another perfect pass. Goes set to Rigo, and he's able to touch it off the fingers and down for a UC San Diego point. You don't see many freshman liberos come into this league and pass as well as Evan Boyle has the last two nights. Yeah, looking pretty poised out there. Already a Big West Conference Freshman of the Week to his ledger this year. Also, Big West Conference Defensive Player of the Week back in March. Free ball coming over the net. Big advantage here for the Tritons. Dyer goes back row. It's Kaa. And he lights it aflame. And UCSD starting to gain some traction here as you see some of the Triton following. And making the trip out to the islands. Oh, foul. A slight hole 
from the block there. And the serve though by Misto goes into the net. Ryan Cog, getting back to him. He is a bit of a legacy volleyball player. His mom Liz played volleyball at UC San Diego. Won a national title, in fact, back in 1990, back when the program was Division Three. Over pass, Galloway. Galloway quick to thank Spinos for the great serve that forced the overpass. Easy pickings for Chaz Galloway. Good serve there. Dyer tracks it down. Tough set. Misfield was smothered, but they somehow scrambled to get it over. No, they will say there were at least a couple of miss hits, or at least one miss hit there on the UCSD side. A double contact is the official call. It did look fairly miraculous that they were able to get that ball back over, despite Miesfeld and the set that pulled him to drift from behind the three-meter line, getting smothered by that Hawaii block. Five serving four. That's the ninth service error for Hawaii. Kind of remarkable, you think about Hawaii winning the first set, 25-19, despite eight service errors in that first stanza. And they served in at 68% clip. Not like them at all. Yeah, not going to make Charlie Wade happy with that number, that's for sure. Back row is Haka. And the time indeed. No signs of that ankle injury he had a couple weeks ago. That ball, he's elevating as well as he ever has in this season. Six serving five, here's Guilherme Boss. Another incredible acrobatic pass there by Boyle, and then Ka with three blockers up, found the crack, he and exploited had, it. He just has so many shots. He almost always makes the right selection. <laughs> and he always has fun, doesn't he? I mean, it doesn't seem like there's anybody enjoying playing volleyball as much as this guy on a night-to-night -night basis. You know, smiling is one of the great ways to relax, by the way. Don't smile and get too tense. So smiling it relaxes you a lot, so it's a, from a sports psychology standpoint, what he's doing, I think, is really smart. He's pretty much always playing in a relaxed state. So are you suggesting that that's more of a strategic thing, or do you think that's just genuine, unadulterated joy there? I think it's both. Because earlier in the year, Coach Rostrand was saying he was way too serious, thinking he had to carry the whole load for the team. And he was way too serious, was never smiling. So Rostrand gave him permission to start smiling more. Well, look out below, Jim Garrison unloading right there. The 6'9 redshirt frost from Manhattan Beach, California. Had nine kills, hit 400. Almost had a half dozen blocks last night. This little cutback shot there. Oh, scramble play on Hawaii's side. Big advantage here for the Tritons. Here's Ka. Cross court and in. That was fierce. And UCSD jumps in front. Like it's a little Rock was drifting way to the outside. He saw that out of the corner of his eye. So he hit cross court, had an open court. Seven kills, hitting 417, and Ryan Kaw. Here's Galloway, up the ladder, off of the platform of Schellinger, chased down by Dyer, touched over and down by Garrison. A campfire moment for Hawaii defensively, and what a hustle play and point for the Tritons. Elias Rostratter, the coach, before this first night of matches, Hey, what's your strength in this team? He says, oh, one of the things we really do well is we scramble. We're scrappy. We're resilient. He showed it just then. So three straight points here for the scrappy, resilient Tritons. Bump set by Tella goes backside on the deep set to Moclius. And he explodes on it. What a set by Jakob Tella.
Somehow I'm getting used to telesets. I don't know why. Look at this. Perfect back, blind bump set <laughs> from Nucleus. Nucleus is always ready for anything from Tele, by the way. I mean, you could see the blockers did not think that that set was coming or that it was even possible. The more logical set would have been the, the set in front of him, not the set behind him. Almost a mishandle there. Here's Hawkus rising high, deep corner as he falls through the wall. And ties set two up at nine apiece. Tell hits between and over that block, finds open court, and as you said, fell on his wallet. <laughs> Hawkus now with six kills. He's in 357. Starting to fill up that stat sheet very well here. Tied for the sixth time here in set two. Here's Cobb. Tried to take line, nothing there. Missed it wide, no touch. Hawaii leapfrogging back in front. Not a bad idea there if you just hit up a little bit too much. In that line. He's got a great arm swing, doesn't he? It's with high velocity and it's deceptive. Proverbial wide fan where he can go in just about every direction. Middle set, that's Garrison. He goes off of Hoagland and down. Jim Garrison. Jim Garrison, when you think about just a freshman, he's got a bright future in front of him, no doubt about that. The reigning Big West Conference freshman of the week, as a matter of fact. And with that jump floater of his, he's been leading the team in service aces this year. Ten all. Oh, how did Shuey get it up? Hawkus tried to go wrist away. Good one-handed save there. Schellinger back row. It's Ka over the block. One-hand diving save there by Chaz. Demi on the swing. Dug up by Ka. We play on. Schellinger will try to time it. Tough angle. Couldn't get it over the net. And Hawaii wins a link to one. So Galloway can help this team in so many ways. With a great jump serve. You know what he's doing in, the, in conference play as far as his kill percentage goes. But how about his, here's a pass by Shu. He somehow gets under it to keep that rally alive. And watch Chaz Galloway give up his body on this one. Pops up with one hand, keep that rally alive. Just amazing and, work. And the third thing he does well is, by the way, he really is a great passer. Oakland missing the court. Service error number 10 now for Hawaii. Got an update from Les Murakami Stadium. Look at this score. Hawaii up 9-1 in the top of the fourth over UC San Diego. Here's Hakas over the block and down. Dyer was able to get a platform on it, but to no avail as Hakas now up to seven kills hitting 375. Starting to look like he's having one of those evenings. And that's kind of how he started off the year. Remember, you know, in January, February, he was really, really good. And then midseason, flattened out a little bit. And now he's picking it up at the right time. Here's Jakob. Oh, what a serve. What a pass there by Boyle. Middle set to Rigo. He's blocked back. Boyle will take on the setting responsibility. Schellinger smothered, but the cover there by Dyer. Back row, it's Cobb. By the double block. Got the touch and gets the point. Ryan Cobb. Virtually unstoppable again. Uncanny the way he's getting, he's getting touches on the block. Unbelievable. He swings high and hard, and then he hopes. He's felled with the serve. Good pass. Tella tried to go quick to Voss. He brushed it, pinballed around, and somehow it's pushed over. But now they're going to say that it did touch the floor. The whistle was late, however. And it's going to be a Hawaii point. Let's take a look at it and see if we can see. That pancake looked good. That one didn't. The second one was not good. Great call by the R1 Hess. 13 serving 12. Oh, the set went right through the hands of Gabe Dyer. A rare mistake there by the 
sophomore setter who had a double-double last night, 44 assists and 11 digs. The perspiration getting the better of him that time. Last night averaged 11 assists per set. That's two over his normal average. Overpass, Demi. Set two and in front of a sellout crowd on senior night. Demi saying thank you to his fellow countrymen. Welcome back. Well, a senior volleyball match tonight, a senior volleyball match tomorrow, but on the beach, the Rainbow Wahine ranked eighth, taking on number 20 Arizona on Spectrum Sports right here at 6.30 p.m. Six seniors. Five seniors, one junior, will be honored at the conclusion of that match. That group includes the likes of Brooke Van Sickle, Chandler Cowell, Elihia Huddleston. So uh, it's going to be a fun one. You want to support that beach program. Uh, Evan Silverstein, Danny Alvarez, that crew has uh, done a great job <laughs> here this year. Job, they? Actually watched that match this afternoon, the Arizona match. They were down. 0-2, had to do the reverse sweep, come back, win three in a row. Flights one, two, and three, all one in three sets. It was an ex some exciting ball. Well, you're talking about it, so let's show the scores. Rainbow Wahine, a 3-2 win over Arizona. And then over 14th ranked Georgia State, 3-2. So some high quality beach volleyball being played here this weekend and on campus as well. By the way, the Rainbow Wahine will host at Queens Beach the Big West Conference Tournament coming up in a couple weeks. Yep, and water polo had a big match tonight too against uh, UC Irvine. A lot of, no wonder it was hard to get in the parking lot tonight. Yeah, there was a line getting in. <laughs> a lot of action here on the lower campus. Here's Keone Tim. Trying to bring the heat, but the net didn't allow it. So Hawaii up two here. They took set one, 25-19. They're hitting 400 here in the second frame compared to 294 for UC San Diego. Tough server here, though, Nick Rigo. And he blasts it long. The one area in which UC San Diego is playing better is they're out digging Hawaii 16 to 8. Part of the reason why Hawaii doesn't have as many digs, they've got five blocks. The ball doesn't even get to the back row for a dig. <laughs> yeah, five and a half total team blocks for Hawaii compared to zero so far for the Tritons. Demi brings it over, sends it long. So back to back to back service errors. And it's still a two-point separation here in the second frame. The Berkeley Meesfeld almost got hit on that one because <laughs> he was running across the hip in the back row. Here's Gabe Dyer. Jump float. Tella chases it down, sets it up for Galloway, rips through the fingertips. Now Ka winds up on in the replay challenge paddle and he's going to say that there was a touch of the net by Hawaii on that roof. And both Tilla and Holmes look over quizzically like, what? We never touched the net. Well, we shall see. You know, Brad Rostrand is pretty good on his challenges. He sees things that the rest of us don't. He did not wait at all. Yeah, let's click on that and see where there might be a... Huh. Don't see anything there. Don't see much in the way of any movement of the net. Using it as a timeout, maybe. You know, the way he was so emphatic in his reaching for the replay challenge paddle told me he saw something i'm yeah. just not sure if the video is going to confirm what he saw i don't, I don't think it will and this is obviously the best angle here the net can albeit the net would be taking place on the other side
anybody would see the net and detect it, it would be the R1 Donna Hess. I would think. So the busiest man in the biz, Dixon Chung. <laughs> about to make another call, and the call will stand. It is a stop block. Hawaii now up to six and a half total team blocks. Jakob Tello, he's been putting up a wall here in recent matches. You mentioned the six blocks last night. Really starting to lock the door there on that far side antenna. Substitution again for UCSD. Sam Warren, number 22 on the floor. Here's Ka through the double block and down. It's like you think you have him cornered. It doesn't appear as though he has anywhere to go. And then he just slithers the ball right through the hand. He also got in there way early, had to stop, gather himself, and then just jump straight up and take a wick swing at it. Roll shot, tough pass there by Hawkes. Hoagland in the middle off the block, played off the net by Schellinger. Well done. Miesfeld gets a swing out of it, the save along the back line by Galloway. Over on two goes Tella, diving save by Dyer. Hit over by Schellinger, another save by Galloway. Hawaii on the attack, it's Hawkes. High hands, and it'll be kept inbounds by Boyle. Back row, Ka, of course. Ryan Ka finds the floor. Ten kills for Ka. Wise, Wise uh, Walker's got a little fooled that time. They went up with a quick set in the middle, and Cog hit that back row attack with pretty much no blockers at all up. UCSD within one. Oh, Cog brought the heat that time. Chase down, bump set, tell it. Hawkus sends it long, no touch. Oh, they will call a touch. And it's a Hawaii point. Brad Rostratter was about to challenge that call, but give Jim Garrison his middle credit. He told his coach, he said, no, I got a peace coach. Yeah. Don't waste the challenge, don't waste the time. Yeah. And here's Kanat Yakana. Last year's Elite 90 award winner. For academic and community and all around student athlete excellence. Schellinger caught it in the sweet spot. He's got a half dozen kills. It's an elite 90 award for uh, that's, the, that's the best GPA in the Final Four is what it is. And every year it goes to some exceptional athlete. And I, I, I wasn't there, but really it kind of apparently received the honor and acknowledged it in Hawaii. You could, yes, that's that's exactly right. I mean, as impressive a display as, as you'll see as you were with an impressive serve to tie this second set up at 19. And Hawaii's going to signal for a timeout. But yeah, you could say Kanai Yakana winning arguably the most prestigious individual honor in college volleyball. Timeout. Well, Ryan Ka. Putting on a show again. 10 kills, hitting 333. Sometimes it seems like when the odds are stacked more against him, that's when he does some of his best work. Yeah, he really does. Not only that, he's also been passing well, and he leads the team in digs. UCSD has fought back to tie it, but out of the timeout, Ewer, who had just aced Hawaii, sends it into the twine. Largest lead for the Rainbow Warriors was three in this second frame. They get to the 20-point mark first, and it's Jakob Tello lining it up to serve. Good pass there by Ka. Middle set, Rigo slam dunks it home. Charlie Wade wanted a lift call, thought that Rigo had palmed it. But no such call coming. UCSD gets the point. We're tied at 20. It didn't look like it might have stuck in the hands a little bit too long. He redirected it, but you know, that's a subjective call. It goes 50 50, call it either way. Miesfeld with the serve. Oh, what a pass there by Hawkins. Middle set, Boss lays the smackdown. How about the connection?
connection between Voss and Teller as of late. Especially tonight. Last night, not as, not as good, but tonight those two have been pretty flawless. Voss is up to five kills, no errors on seven attempts. He's hitting 714 to go along with four blocks. Outside, and it's Schellinger. So the two outsides for UCSD doing the most damage. Ten kills for Ryan Kahn, now seven kills for Josh Schellinger. Schellinger hitting 385, Kahn hitting 333. Those are good numbers for the outside. Yeah, good bounce back for Schellinger as well. Hit 125 last night. Six-five redshirt cross from Bloomingdale, Illinois. Mentioned last night he has a dog. The dog's name Libero. is Libero. <laughs> and that's just beautiful. <laughs> Three times Big West of freshman of the week. And Mucleus has to chase the second touchdown. Free ball coming over the net. Big advantage here for the Tritons to take the lead. Here's Cobb through the block. Pancake Sam Galloway. Bumped over the net by Sheward. Tritons on the attack. They go outside. It's Cobb again. One hand save by Shuey. Bump set Galloway. Mucleus the swing. Diving save by Boyle. Over on two goes Dyer, but Shuey was there. Here's Deeney. And it's down. Oh, Canelo, the fans are getting their money's worth tonight. With rallies like that. Flying, we'll call it the flying body rally. What do you think? <laughs> You're going to take some time to wipe off all the sweat from the Terraflex. Brett Sheward was all over the floor on the Hawaii side of the net. Uh, ultimately, UCSD gets the point, and they jump in front here. 22 serving 21, putting up a fight after dropping the first set 25-19. In fact, Charlie Wade not really liking the feels at the moment. Signals for a timeout. We're going to keep it's things Sunday, here. Monday, the are a good timeout by Coach Wade. Well, what he led by as many as three, and they were up 17-14 here in the second. UC San Diego led by two. That was their largest lead when they were up 9-7. They're up 22-21 at the moment. All right, Big West Conference Tournament next week in Irvine. All the seeds except the top two are set. It'll be UC San Diego as the five seed. They'll take on four seed UC Santa Barbara in the first round. That'll be April 20th. UCI locked in to the three seed CSUN will be the number six seed going in. The only thing that remains now is who's going to be one, who's going to be two. It'll either be Hawaii one and Long Beach State two or the other way around. Hawaii with a win would lock up the top seed. Let's send it over to Ryan Kalei Suji. Thanks, Kunal. Well, here on the Hawaii sideline, the coaching staff really just talking to their passers, primarily saying we have got to pass, we have to get back into system. Really, they're saying that the passers are just getting a little too lazy, not getting their feet to the ball, and really want to concentrate on this first contact. Prior to this timeout, Demetrius Buclius was actually asking Charlie Wade to challenge that last call because the ch call was that it was four hits. Demi was arguing that the block actually touched it and that the whistle blew too early. So the coaching staff for a second there were debating if they should challenge it coming out of this timeout. They ultimately made the decision that they're not going to challenge that and let the play stand. Back over to you guys. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Good intel there. Charlie Wade electing not the challenge of the call and a pretty pivotal moment here in the second set at bat. Telling her to serve. Been playing well, been serving well here tonight. Another good serve, but Shuey puts the pass on the money. Backside, it's Mucleus. Rips it through the block and down. And we're tied again. And yet another against the flow set by Tella. Running to area four, front left. And Jackson back over his head to the waiting Mucleus. Terrific play. They're tied for the 13th time here in set two. Voss. Pass by Boyle is a good one. Middle set Rigo blocked back. The cover there by Ka. Middle set Rigo again. The dig by Hakas. Tella high balls into Galloway. Tools the block. 
shoulders up above the tape and made the midair decision, and Hawaii jumps in front. What a set from Keller. He, it was a spinning ball that was high. I thought he might even bump it. He know he pops it up with his hands, puts it up perfectly for Chaz Galloway. And another timeout, this time by UCSD. So we've seen 13 ties in this second set. We have seen five lead changes. That last one coming. That gives Hawaii the one-point advantage here in the second set. Chaz Galloway, he has taken his game to another level in Big West Conference play. He's hitting over 100 percentage points better in league play than he did for the entire season. And tonight again, offensive, defensive contributions. And he's uh, passing almost every other ball. Plus, he's got his serve working again. So his total game is really coming together. And it couldn't come together at a better time for Hawaii than during playoff season. Yeah, just to follow up with some evidence to what we were talking about. So averaging 2.4 kills per set this season, he's over three kills per set in conference play. 284 hitting percentage overall on the year. He's hitting 394 in league play. That's a huge number for an outside hitter. That kind of number is usually reserved for middle attackers. Maybe getting a little bit more revved up by the fact that his former club teammate is on the other side of the net. There you go. And the back squad. Yeah. Chaz Galloway and Ryan Carr, get out of here. I know. 23 serving 22 out of the timeout. Here it comes from Voss. And pulls Dyer off the net. He'll go to the far antenna. Cobb couldn't do anything with it. Hawkes, though, with the set, goes to Demi through the block. Two-hand save, Schellinger. Here's Kahn on the swing. Block! And the towels come out, and the fans stand up. And upon their in unison scream of roof, Brad Rostratter, ever the party pooper, yeah. signals for a timeout. <laughs> well, we mentioned and showed you the brackets for the Big West Conference Tournament next week. We will be there. Spectrum Sports will bring you quarterfinal and semifinal coverage. Both quarterfinals, both semifinals. We will have that for you here on Spectrum Sports. Myself, C-Mac, Ryan will be up there. James Anastasiadis is going to make the trip. He'll be doing the rounds, I'm sure. Yeah. It's going to be a great event, I'll tell you. You can't go to George Mason in May to watch the, the uh, NC2A championship. This is the next best thing, where you have well, three of the top five teams in the country playing in this tournament. Hawaii has a huge advantage being number one or number two by not having to play on day number one. And what about if you parse it even further? How much more of a potential advantage is it if you're the one seed versus if you're the two seed? Oh, it's huge. If you're the, if you're the one seed, you're going to play Santa Barbara or San Diego. If you're the two seed, you're likely going to play Irvine, who just went five with Long Beach State. So and who will be on their home floor. Yeah, exactly. Hawaii and Hawaii fans certainly thinking if they can be the one seed, if they can get to that championship match in the conference tournament, there should not be a way where they would not be included in the NCAA tournament regardless of what happens in the championship match. Absolutely. Oh, 10,000 standing up. This is cool. Work. Aloha ball for set two. Good pass there by Schellinger. Here's Cobb. With the advantage, Tella has options. Goes backside. Demi puts it away, and Hawaii takes the second frame, 25-22, in front of a sellout crowd on Senior Night, the Big West regular season finale. The home team will have a chance.
Welcome back here to the Pizza Hut match of statistics. Obviously, Hawaii with the lead in the blocks department. What else stands out to you, C-Mac? That's the most significant one. You know, the Dig San Diego is winning that battle 22-13, but they aren't converting in transition to get enough points. And look at the kill percentage as well. Hawaii hitting it up where they usually hit right around 400 and holding San Diego to 228, just a little below their season average. How would you describe the way Hawaii has played here so far in this match? I'd call it energized and more clean than last night. Last night they made a lot of mistakes, a lot of errors. Uh, tonight they're playing much more clean volleyball, except for the service errors early on. This crowd, though, has been busting all evening, coming out to support this squad in its final regular season home match. On senior night, six players who will be honored, including that guy, Cole Hoagland. And they would love to send this senior class out, at least symbolically, in style, with a victory. But they got to take one more set off of UCSD in order to do that, leading two sets to none. 25-19 was the score in set one, 25-22 the score in set two. The Greek connection leading the way offensively for Hawaii. Spiros Hakas with eight kills. Demetrius Nucleus with six. And here it comes from Jakob Tella to get things started in set three. And that's Rigo cutting it to the near side. That middle attack for UC San Diego was very effective last night. In fact, some of the Hawaii coaching staff telling us that that obviously was something that they needed to take a look at between last night and tonight's match. Rigo yet to make an error tonight. His fourth kill in eight tries. Hitting 500. Garrison hitting 333. Yes, yeah, so the middle attack is doing well. But, uh, you know, Hawaii's servers, though, pull uh, Dyer off the net so much, he can't set the middle as, as much as I think he would like to. So here's Hakas following up that Josh Ewart serve into the net. That goes outside, Schellinger off of Tella and out of play. Josh Schellinger finding his form this evening. He's got eight kills. He's hitting up around 400, and he's got a half dozen digs. Yeah, he's playing much better offensively, making fewer errors, to be sure. Good serve there. How about the pass by Brett Sheward? Backside, it's Mucleus. The kick saved by Boyle. And then coming and crashing into that UCSD bench is Ryan Ka. Looks like everybody is okay over there, with the exception of maybe a couple of the arena chairs. Better there than the media table, huh? What do you <laughs> That's think? for darn sure. Look at Boyle. That's a great play. Ryan Ka coming out of there still with the smile. Yeah. <laughs> But give kill number seven to Demetrius Mucleus. We're tied at two. Voss into the net. So Hawaii now up to 13 service errors compared to two aces. On the other side for the Tritons, they have 10 errors to one ace from the service line. I'm sure we have a lovely see the server serve in at about 90% clip right now. We're hitting around 75%, much, much lower. I mean, especially with the way this block has been active for Hawaii. Got to give him a chance to make some plays. Absolutely. As Rigo goes into the twine as well. Last night, Hawaii had 14 total team blocks. That was a season high. And we showed you the statistics between sets two and three. Hawaii with seven and a half team blocks here in this one compared to zero for the Tritons. Three serving three in set three. Oh, the block was there against Garrison. Here's Ka, three blockers up, and he's roofed. They finally got him. He really had nowhere to go there. That block was waiting, ready, six hands across, nowhere to go. Tella, Hoagland, and Galloway. The triumvirate on that rejection. Mono Roofing Company bringing the hard hats here this evening. And it's an ace. Mucleus with his second. 
second ace of the match. And he now leads the team in that category on the season. 32. In the lucky cable ace. Five serving three. Error number four on the night. So here it comes from Gabe Dyer. A knuckleball serve that time. Hogan in the middle. Bounces it off of the Terraplex. That's just his second kill. But only his fifth swing as well. He's got four blocks here this evening. Paul Hoagland, who still has a year of eligibility, but is deciding he's wrapping up his undergraduate degree. He's going to pursue perhaps the next level of volleyball overseas. Yeah, he's going to go to Japan and pick up, pick up with a, a pro team over there. He is half Japanese. His language skills said are, uh, could be better. He listens better than he speaks, he says. His brother Hugh actually was named to the Japan Olympic basketball team. So it just goes to show uh, how their lineage ties into that country and providing them some opportunities. What an absolute smackdown by Chaz Galloway. Cleared for takeoff. Once again, he just elevates and basically defies gravity. So gifted. Almost unfair. You can go up there and just kind of look around. Well, let's see, where's the open part of the court? Oh, yeah, I think <laughs> I'll go right. there. That's right. The view must be spectacular from up there. <laughs> yeah. Seven serving five. How about the layout pass by Boyle? And he put it on the money, and then Schellinger shells it. Evan Boyle, that was something special. He's, he's really turned out to be quite the libero, just a freshman. Most liberos, you get, they grow into their position. It takes years to become a good libero. Tella, oh, he lost the joust, tried to go over uh, against Schellinger, but he wasn't having it. And UCSD has tied this third frame up at seven. Alert, alert play that time by Schellinger. Tella, D set. Oh, it was a little off the mark. Demi had to tip it over. So Ka with the set to Schellinger. Off the dome of, I think, Hakas. Tracked down there by Galloway. Here's Demi, a better swing through the block saved by Garrison. Back row, it's Ka. Punched over the net and down by Lucas. A BK. That's your basic dig kill, right? You see it all the time. Not. <laughs> you'll see that once every eight or nine matches, you'll see a big kill. It's like getting a hole in one <laughs> in golf. Pretty rare. Well, that's his eighth kill here this evening for the reigning ABCA National Player of the Week. Shelling are blocked. Good cover there by Dyer. So Ka always oh, sends the set over the net. Pinballed around. Shelling will get a swing. as they did last night where they had 14 blocks starting to rack up the blocks again with nine ten and a half I should say and they're in the double figures again here as a squad nine serving seven good serve by Tella outside Schellinger hits it into the twine and away he goes up three and Brad Rostrader has seen enough he's going to signal for a timeout that pendulum of momentum swinging once again to the Hawaii side.
Welcome back. We got some scores from around the UH way. Rainbow Warrior Baseball up 12-4 on UC San Diego. That's right over at Les Murakami Stadium. Rainbow Wahine softball winning game one over UC Riverside in eight innings, 6-5. And then up on UC Riverside in game two in the top of the sixth, 7-1. Rainbow Wahine water polo falling to UC Irvine. That match effectively clinches Irvine the top seed in the upcoming Big West Conference water polo tournament with one game remaining. Good serve by Tello. It's an ace. And that's career number 120 for Jakob. He's one away from tying the career record at the University of Hawaii. Two away from setting it anew. And he's missed how many matches? <laughs> I think seven matches he's missed, missed this year. And a bunch last year as well. Schellinger. Three blockers up. And he gets big time stuff. They blocked out the sun against Schellinger right there. What? That was very, very difficult, but the block was up there so settled and ready for him. And Brad Rostratter not waiting for the 15-point media timeout. He signals for another timeout as Jakob Tello on senior night doing a little more work from the service line. Welcome back. Good look at Brad Rostratter former head coach at Vanguard in the NAIA. In fact, he was the first head coach when that program was first established in 2019. And today, Vanguard won the NAIA National Championship under new head coach Brian Rofer. As that hit goes long, no touch. He's still got an assistant that was previously with Ross Stratter, Eric Bowley. And three players who were among the first group to play with Ross Stratter, Kyle Anima, Cody Watts and Ryan Jew, so wanted to uh, send a congratulations. You know, I think Coach Rostrader can take some pride. He's still uh, a bit of a part of that Absolutely. incredible accomplishment. Absolutely. Oh, how about that cut cross court net violation is called against Hawaii. So the point goes to UCSD. Josh Ewart with the cross court shot attempt. So Hawaii by five here in set three. Up two sets to none. That one came out awkward off the platform of Galloway, played off the net by Teller. Galloway still got a pretty decent swing at it. Here's Schellinger. That was a more than decent swing. Put some pounding on it, as a matter of fact. And UCSD within four. That block not as well formed. A little more shifty there, and I believe there's a hole in it. And Schellinger found that hole. Nice shot. Hawaii trying to lock up the top seed in next week's Big West Conference Tournament. They do so with a win. They also claim a share of the Big West title. And Kaz Galloway soaring through the skies. He is worth the price of admission. He's a little bit like John Moran in the NBA as far as the ability to jump, hang, look around, dunk, in the back real quick. They should show a movie on that flight. Yeah. <laughs> As Haka serves it into the net. Schellinger. Perfect pass by Shuey. Middle set boss. Lays the lumber. Some G4. From G Voss gets away. The five point advantage, they get to 15 first. Timeout on the floor. UCSD blockers knew right where that set was going to go, and they still couldn't stop Guillermo Voss. Well, while we have a break in the action, let's send it over to Ryan Kale Suji. He is with a very special guest, Ryan. That's right, Kano. I'm here with Hawaii volleyball legend Tony Crabb, who was, of course, the USA Olympic coach and the grandfather of Kanai Akana. I want to ask you, you know, Kanai started his career away, came home to play here at the University of Hawaii. What has this experience been for you and Johanna? 
uh, we're so happy that he came home. And the school's been great for him. Plus, the volleyball team has been fabulous for him. Great to have him home. You know, and Kanai, of course, just one of many talented grandchildren you have, of course, Taylor and Trevor. What was like growing up with so much volleyball in the family? Uh, Trevor and Taylor are good beach volleyball players. And Kanai wants to go and play with them when he graduates. Yeah. And just final question, you've been around a lot of volleyball. Your thoughts on just the level of volleyball that this Hawaii team is playing? Volleyball here in Hawaii? Yeah. Fabulous, great volleyball. And this team is an awesome team. Kanai is lucky to be on it. They're very good. Tony Grant, thank you so much for spending time with us. Back over to you guys. Thanks a lot, Ryan. That's volleyball royalty right there. The great Tony Crab. Not only did he coach, you know, the Olympic team in 84, he was also Alan Rosehill's assistant in the early 90s and during that era. So he's, he's done all, he's now he actually coaches some club volleyball as well. <laughs> and here's Keone Finn. Pretty good lineage attached to this guy as well. Yeah, yeah Apple Wilton. And Keone. 15 serving 10 out of the timeout. It's a beautiful serve. Touched over right near the antenna for a UCSD point. What a play by Gabe Dyer. The Hawaii players are arguing that that ball touched the antenna. And so Charlie Wade is going to oblige and he's going to challenge this call. And this should be, I, I think, a quick and easy call. Either makes the antenna move or it doesn't. I mean, that pin is right in front of the R1 Diana Hess. So you would think that if something occurred, she would see it. But obviously, bang bang situations like this always hard to tell. It's a good play, no touch. Yeah, it looks like a heck of a an improv to play there play by, by Gabe Dyer. Gabe Dyer, that's a great play. Very alert, very savvy. Taps it down. No violation there. That's just hard luck for Keone Fim, another fantastic serve. Remember yeah. last night he had one that was ruled out. Charlie challenged it. It looked like it was possibly in, just scraped the line, yeah. but the call was upheld. And so Keone Fim very close to getting another race in that moment. And here. That ball traverses just a few more inches towards the pin, and he's got himself another race. Exactly. And this is pretty easy call. I'm surprised Dixon Chun hasn't already ruled the play stands. Well, here it comes. Survey says. And the call is confirmed. What a Hawaii's blocking tonight for those who just tuned in. 12 blocks to one for San Diego. So Hawaii with two challenges left. And it's Nick Rigo back to serve. How about Sheward? He's been nails all night. Mucleus comes swooping in. Dropping the anvil. Once again, Tella gives his outside hitters some pretty good sets that have either moving blocks that they're attacking or split blocks. Nucleus makes the most of it. Nine kills now. Here's Dini. Hawaii by five. Into the net. Five service errors by Dini so far. How about the set distribution by, <laughs> by Tello tonight? Nucleus nine kills, Spiros eight, Galloway seven, Guillerme six. Touched over by Galloway. So it's Schellinger. Sets up Ewart, one hand save there by Schuer. That's his fifth dig. 
Oh, that's bumped up above the net. A little joust up there will be played on UCSD's side. Schellinger from the back row. Great ad lib there by the Tritons, and they're within three here in the third. Very creative play here. Nice little side set from Dyer. And Schellinger makes the most of it. Tooling left hand of Hawaii's block. Sella will go D set. Demi demolishes it. Hawaii back up four. Another guy who will be pursuing his professional aspirations after this season. He's got some good volleyball on tape or on video for mm -hmm. potential suitors. Exactly. And with the right coach and the right center, he's going to have a great professional career. One hand block attempt there by Hoagland, but Garrison will get the kill. Garrison with his fourth put down. Remember, he had nine kills, hit 400 last night, so a bit of a quieter performance for Garrison in this one. UH led by as many as six. They were up 13-7. They lead by three, make it two. Ryan Kaw delivering on the ace. And the Tritons are not going quietly. This guy, Ryan Kaw, is a problem. He's special, isn't he? Pass by Galloway is a good one. Here's Hakas. Here's Meryl Hakas. Gets kill number nine. Strong. Just very level performance here for Spiros Hakas. Nine kills, just one error. He's hitting 421. He's got a pair of assists, a pair of digs, and four blocks. And now Kanaya Kana. We just spoke with his grandpa moments ago. He's in and back to serve. By the way, his grandmother, Wendy, also a great beach player. I mean, of and indoor, an indoor player. Outside, Schellinger through the block. Right there is Demi. So Tella, back set to Demi. Dug up over the net, it'll be fielded by Akana. Tella, looked like he was going for it instead. Open net for Muglis. It was all set up by the dig by Akana. He put it up there with Tella to give his fake attack play and deliver the back set to Demi. Looks like there's going to be a challenge. I think they're going to say, I think that Demi was under the net before the ball touched the ground. He definitely went hydroplaning he did. under the net <laughs> after the fact. I guess the timing of it might be the uh, focal point of the review. Well, it looks like he's going for a net violation yeah, early so, okay, on in the rally. I was wondering, it didn't necessarily seem like a call that Rostratter would be interested in, in challenging with nobody around that area of the net, but he is going to actually challenge that there was a net violation earlier in the play. This is where the nachos and garlic fries lines get long whenever there's a challenge. <laughs> There's where the net was supposedly called, but I don't see a net there. Well, Brad Rostrader did talk to us prior to the match, and he did say something along the lines of utilizing the challenge as a veritable timeout. He ran out of timeouts. That would always help. <laughs> that gives us another chance to look at that beautiful setup by Jakob Teller pulled everybody because it looked like he was about to take a whack at it and then just sets up Dimi wide open net and he obliterated it. There's no net violation there. All right, so Hawaii will get the point. It will be a Dimi 
Tyreek Hill. I love that sign that we showed. It had the Greek flag and had the words Demi and God. At times he has looked like a Demi God. There's another Merkley sign that was going to come out last week, but the person couldn't get it down in time. One of my former students. Nucleus, Nucleus. <laughs> Behind the head, middle set there. Finished off by Garrison. Nicely done by Gabe Dyer. Don't forget to stay tuned at the conclusion of this match. We will bring you the senior night festivities in their entirety. Special class. A senior class that has spanned the most successful run in the history of this program as that serve goes on. And a senior class that's not Powell yet. After tonight, it will be the Big West Conference Tournament next week in Irvine. And at least the hope and the plan is that Hawaii will then have an opportunity to pull off what we've been referring to as a 2023 peat at the national tournament. No, no, there's, there's three seasons, basically. There's a the preseason, there's your regular season, and then there's the NCAA championships. Outside here, shelling her down the line and in. Oh, they're going to say that it was out beyond the near sideline. was ruled in by the line judge at our end, but he was calling the end line, and so the line judge at the opposite corner called it wide. And I think we're going to have a review of this call. So ruled out on the floor, Brad Roshratter, who is making absolutely the most of his replay challenge opportunities. He is. He's going to challenge it, and I think he's going to win it. That's very close. That is very close. I would not be surprised to see this overturned. Huh. A little blurry there. This one might show us something. Oh, of course, there's a lock of hair disheveled in just the right way as to block the point of contact with the Terraflex. <laughs> <laughs> but it will be ruled in. I think the first angle more or less told the story. So instead of 21 16, it's 2017. Big difference. That is a big difference. <laughs> that Ross Trader just turning into a replay challenge maestro over there. <laughs> Here's the serve coming from Ewart. And that gets Hawaii out of system. It's Hakas high ball in it to Mucleus off the high hands. Retrieved by Ka. Back row, it's Ka through the block, but wrist away, but missed it wide. He was able to avoid the triple block, but to his detriment. And Hawaii back up four. Hitting percentage dropping a bit here for Ryan Ka. Ten kills hitting 120. UCSD hitting 174 as a team here in the third. What about a serve from Hawkins that gets UCSD in all kinds of trouble? And in fact, it's an ace. And you get the feeling that Hawaii sees the end in sight. They can control their destiny, remember, by winning tonight and garnering that first seed in the postseason tournament. It's 32 aces for Spiros. He and Demi are tied for the lead on the season. Tied no more. Hawkins goes back to back, and he takes the season lead in aces. And here comes Philip Umler. You see the love that he receives from the fans, the love he receives from his teammates, and a massive ovation for Demetrius Mucleus as he makes his way to the Hawaii bench. Nice move by Charlie to uh, allow these fans to appreciate Demi and Kumler. Hawkes. Oh, he grunts it on that one. Give him the hat trick. Three straight aces for Spiros. And they will rise. A sellout crowd on senior night. Aloha Bar for a big win. 
regular season. Regular season, right? Oh, they'll have to wait at least a moment longer. Hawaii won the Big West regular season title back in 2021. They would officially be co-champs with Long Beach State, but would have the top seed next week. Backside, here's Umner. Off the block, pushed over by Cobb. Backside is Umner again, the quick reset, and he's blocked by Cobb. Everyone in the building knew that Jakob was going to Philip Umler right there. Yeah, they're fishing buddies. How can you not set your fishing buddy? I think he's going to get set again. What do you think, Kanoa? Want a good pass? Backside, it's Umler. Oh, he hit the pin. Oh, Jakob's doing everything he can to give Philip the match point. It's now 20 serving 24. It remains a low ball. Pass by Sheward. Where does Tele go this time? He goes to Umler. Blocked back. Saved by Sheward. Bumped over by Hakas. Outside it's Cobb. Blocked by Umler, but it goes out. And UCSD gets the 21. This is now getting interesting, isn't it? Good credit to the Tritons for battling, fighting back. Fifth set point. tournament and they do it a cocky a lure on aloha on senior night you know i would say it's a pretty definitive statement tonight the sellout crowd. An impressive performance in the regular season finale. And the last time in this building we're going to be seeing that group of six. What a special group it has been for sure. Well we're going to take a look at a few more statistics here. We'll check out the Hyundai head-to-head -head stat line because this was one of the storylines, C-Man. The team blocks. Hawaii had a season high 14 last night, 12 in this one compared to two for UCSD. That was a huge difference, maybe the primary difference. I would totally agree. Hawaii hasn't blocked this well in back-to-back -back matches all year long. It could bode well for the upcoming tournament if they could continue that kind of work at the net. All right, Charlie Wade is standing next to Scott Robbs. Let's send it over to Scott to hear from the head coach of the Co-Big West regular season champs. Charlie, congratulations, Co-Big West champions, but more importantly, you get that number one seed next week. Yeah, I mean, especially this year where the 2-3 uh, literally could be an elimination game into the NCAA. So uh, nice to win another regular season title and you know, looking forward to getting in the postseason. Season's not over, obviously, but for these six seniors, last time they played here, how special a group is this? Yeah, I mean, really, as special as it gets. You know, they've done so much for the program, so much for the community. Um, they will be missed, there's no question. Go have fun. Thanks, bud. Back over to you, Kanoa. Thanks a lot, Scott. Bank of Hawaii presents the players of the match. Let's check it out. For UC San Diego, Josh Schellinger, he was awfully good. 12 kills, hit 292, six digs, a block, and a service ace. And the seniors for Hawaii, Cole Hoagland, Devin Johnson, Jakob Tella, Demetrius Muklias, Philip Umler, and Kana'i Akana. It is their aloha ball, at least symbolically here in Manoa. So, uh, C-Mac, I'll give you the last word. I just am so happy for these, uh, these six seniors to go out in front of a sellout crowd, 
and uh, they created so much adrenaline in this building tonight. Between the crowd and the six seniors, there's adrenaline flowing everywhere, and, and uh, I'm sure they're very, very happy that they played as well as they did. Well, we will bring you all of the senior night festivities in just a few moments. Don't forget about the post-game show. It was a wonderful performance by Hawaii. It will be a splendid and emotional display for this special group of six outgoing Rainbow Warriors. So don't miss that, but for now, for CMAC, Chris McLaughlin, I'm Kanoa Lehi. We'll see you in Irvine next week, everybody. Until next time, we bid you aloha from Manoa. From Spectrum Sports, it's the Hawaii Honda Dealers post-game show. Well, the match is pal, but the celebrating is just going to begin. It's Hawaii over UCSD in three, but it's time now to honor the Super 6 seniors. We throw it over to public address announcer Ben Kia'aina. Volleyball fans, tonight we are proud to recognize a senior class who endured so much during their time in Manoa. From a pandemic-shortened year, followed by a season playing in an empty arena, to making three NCAA championship appearances, including back-to-back -back titles the past two seasons. These six seniors will never be forgotten, and tonight, we honor each of them. Here to present our seniors with their senior plaques are Representing the University of Hawaii Federal Credit Union, Vice President Brian Anderson, Lending Manager Dustin Matsudaira, and Marketing Supervisor Riley Yamamoto. <laughs> Along with University of Hawaii Athletics Director David Matlin and Head Coach Charlie Wade and staff. Our first senior came to the program in 2018 out of Westlake High School in Thousand Oaks, California. In four seasons as a Rainbow Warrior, he appeared in five career matches, all during the 2020 season. This senior lists his favorite memory as being a part of the 2021 National Championship team. He will graduate this December with a degree in marketing. Volleyball fans, please show your aloha for the six foot five outside hitter from Thousand Oaks, California, number nine, Devin Johnson. And Devin Johnson, a player who really may not have seen any or significant playing time on the court, but a player that has contributed to the team, the brotherhood of this team. It was important for him to be back with this team after taking some time off just so he could be a part and he is instrumental in the in just helping with the overall team chemistry of this team. Devin just truly speaks to the dedication that he's had to this wide program to stick around knowing that he wouldn't have too much of a chance playing on the court due to school reasons but just being around the program and around these guys that he's been together with for six years just talks to the love that he has for this program for the state of Hawaii his dad Court Johnson grew up out in Lanikai and they ended up moving back for his entire season and just truly speaks so highly about the love and ohana that he's created out here and just being part of this very special Hawaii program our next senior transferred back to the Rainbow Warrior program after playing two seasons at BYU the Punahou School graduate spent the next three years playing for the green and white as an outside hitter and serving specialist. Last season, he was named the NCAA's Elite 90 Award recipient for having the highest grade point average at the championship. This senior lists beating Long Beach State in last year's Big West Finals as his favorite memory. He will graduate this May with a bachelor's degree in finance. Volleyball fans, let's hear it for the six foot five outside hitter from Honolulu, number 25, Kanaiya Kana! Kanaiya 
Kana continuing in the long legacy and tradition of great crab volleyball players. A player who graduated from Punahou, went away, but found his way back to Manoa and has become a role model for all Hawaiians or local kids who have a dream of playing for this school. Kanai, of course, doing it not only on the court, but academically as well, showing that uh, he really does have a future here in Hawaii. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Kanai Akana is a name you'll hear a lot in the future because he's going to be a very successful young man. Talk about the courage coming out to one of the top teams in the country, transferring from BYU and making a huge statement in the short amount of time that he's been on this team, loved by the fans, loved by everyone in the state of Hawaii. He's been a huge addition to this Hawaii team and a big part of the two national championships so far. Our third senior is one half of the team's Greek connection. He came to Manoa as a highly regarded international player from the Greek national program and made an immediate impact with the Rainbow Warriors. His senior has appeared in 72 career matches and is a two-year starter at opposite. He was the team's leading attacker last season en route to AVCA All-America honors. And this year, he's a contender for National Player of the Year honors. He will graduate this summer with a degree in kinesiology and rehab science. Volleyball fans, please show your aloha for the six foot six opposite from Souffle, Greece, number 11, Demetrios Mouklias. Demetrios Mouklias putting his name here in the history books of Hawaii volleyball greats at the opposite position. There have been a lot that played in this position, but he has made it his own with a faster tempo. After, you know, taking a year off to rehab some injuries, he came back stronger than ever and really contributed to this team. Ο Δημήτρης Μούχλιας είναι ένας από τους πιο καλούς παίχτες που περάσανε από το πρόγραμμα. Δημήτρης Μούχλιας just had a crazy big impact, one of the top players to ever come through this Hawaii program and has really made a statement this year that he is one of the top players that has come through NCAA history and through the program of Hawaii. I'm sure his family is watching from Greece and they're super appreciative of it. He told me to give a message to them, σας αγαπώ πάρα πολλά και μακάρι να σας ήταν εδώ, αλλά από μακριά σας αγαπώ πολύ. This next senior is a Hanai son of Hawaii, having immersed himself into the culture and community during his five-year career with the Rainbow Warriors. He made 13 starts as a sophomore in 2020 and was on his way to a breakout season before the season was cut short. This senior overcame a career-threatening injury to appear in 52 career matches. He says he will miss working out with the boys every day the most. This senior has already received his bachelor's degree and will earn his master's in marketing management this summer. Volleyball fans, let's hear it one more time for the six foot seven outside hitter from Cheske, Budio Pizze, Czech Republic. Number 16, Philip Humler! Philip Humler, who has overcome so much during his career, started as that started in his sophomore season and overcame an illness that really set him back, but came back stronger than ever. Maybe not necessarily being able to contribute on the court, but off the court as well. Being such a key player to just the overall development and the leadership of this team. But more than that, he has adopted this culture and he has a future here in Hawaii as well. He wants to call this place his own, uh, his home, and just someone who will bleed Hawaii. Talk about facing adversity. This player's been through a lot. He's done an incredible job from being on the court and continuing leading this team off the court. And one of the guys that's definitely one of the most loved in the crowd. And just a big fan favorite. Talk about really embracing the culture out here in Hawaii and just leading this team and truly being a big leader for years to come. Our fifth senior came to UH 
as a two-sport standout at Iolani School. After redshirting in 2019, he worked his way up as an outside hitter on the B squad to become a starter at middle blocker last season. A fixture in the starting lineup again this season he is one of the most athletic players in the country and has become the king of Kong blocks. His favorite memory is the team's trip to Japan in 2018 and the numerous travel trips over his career. He has already received his bachelor's degree and will earn his master's in travel industry management this winter. Volleyball fans, show your aloha for the six foot four middle blocker from Waimanalo, Oahu, number seven. And you see, and you see the emotion by Cole Hoagland, the Iolani graduate who came here as an outside hitter, not really knowing where he would fit in, and has evolved into one of the best, most physical middle blockers in the country. Someone who, again, is a great role model for all young Hawaii athletes out there who dream of playing on this court showing that you could be undersized and make a big and significant impact looking to continue his career playing in Japan after his time here at Manoa. Brian, you couldn't have put it more perfectly. How do you come into this program being an outside and become one of the top middles in the country standing at six foot three and that a lot of it has to do with his athleticism. He's done an incredible job of just embracing any role that he's been thrown into and just truly enjoying the moment and having fun with it. He's a true inspiration to a lot of local young talent out here that you could do anything possible. Our final senior will leave a legacy on the program that will be hard to match. He is a first team ABCA All-American and first team academic All-American and is a leading candidate to win his second straight Big West Player of the Year award. This senior has directed the nation's top offense the past three seasons and will finish in the program's top 10 in assists and service aces. He will always remember playing in the stand and doing the ha in the locker room before matches. He will receive his master's degree in urban and regional planning next month. Volleyball fans, on your feet for the six foot six setter from Tonsberg, Norway, the captain, number 10, Jakob Tella. And Jakob Tella, who will go down as not only one of the best players to wear a Rainbow Warrior jersey, but one of the best players in NCAA history with the resume that he has put together, a player that has become the poster child for this program, both for what he's done on the court and off. A player who, by many accounts, may be the national player of the year this year. And we said this before, he may not be Hawaiian, he may not have graduated from a Hawaii high school, but he is a local through and through. A true inspiration and a true and like just talent that proves what Hawaii volleyball is. He wears it with pride. He's done everything he's done for the people of Hawaii, for the state, for the school, and everyone out there just truly embracing this culture and what it means to play for the entire state of Hawaii. He's left one of the biggest impacts here in the Simplify Stan Sheriff Arena, and he's just done a phenomenal job truly embracing what it means to be a Rainbow Warrior. Hey, hey, Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it once again for the class of 2023. Devin Johnson, Ganae Akana, Damien Dinos Muklius, Philip Hogler, Cole Hoagland, and Jakob Tella. And the party's going to continue. Most of the sold-out crowd sticking around, obviously, to honor these six super seniors who still have work to do. Of course, next week, the Big West Conference Tournament. And then uh, two weeks after that, hopefully the NCAA Tournament hosted by George Mason over on the East Coast. So really, Hawaii just needs four more, not just needs, but four wins away 
from a three people. What this group has already accomplished is unmatched in UH men's volleyball history. National titles in 2021 and 2022. And we'll see what happens this year. I think that they've set themselves up to be in a very good position going into this postseason. They've truly had a couple of battles this season. And look at just that brotherhood that they've created. A team that's been together for five, if not six years, just enjoying every single moment together. They know that the sweat, blood, and tears that goes into the practice gym is going to pay off. I think they've set themselves up. The leaders on this team have done a phenomenal job to get this team to where it needs to be at a very good mark at the end of this season. An emotional senior night here. I mean, we, I mean, it's just very evident to see just how close this team is by the emotion that is being displayed. I'm not sure we ever seen any senior night this emotional for a men's volleyball team, uh, but I think they've gone through so much together, especially these two. The two Greeks who relied on each other so much. You can see the emotion between both of them. Uh, but I think it just speaks to, again, the love that they all have, not only for each other, but for playing for this university and being a part of it. They realize that this is something special. And also people who realize this is something special, the Santa Barbara team who has, excuse me, San Diego team that has not left. They stayed here and watched the entire senior night uh, ceremony. Granted, knowing that this is a unique experience unlike anywhere else in the country. Brian, you kind of said it perfectly. I've been through this program the past seven years, and I've watched seven senior nights in the Simplify at Sanchez Air Arena. And it's truly something emotional. I mean, don't get anywhere else, and it really speaks to the bad days that way. No, I 100% agree. And we've been around the program a long time. I haven't seen an as emotional men's volleyball senior night as tonight. Because I think these guys have, as Ryan mentioned, all the things they've gone through as a collective group. And they still have that goal in front of them to win another national championship. We'll take a break, but the party will continue. We'll come back with more from the corner. Highlight senior night, the final match for a UCSD. And we start off with Spittles Hawkins. The Greek always outstanding on the left side. Nine kills for Spittles, who hit four, 21 on the night. He also contributed three service aces. And there you see one of his four blocks on the night. Talking about blocking, this week in Hawaii really brought out the Manila Roofing Company. Hawaii with a dozen blocks on the night. The leader with six was Guillermo Voss. Also five for a Demi Nucleus, four for Cole Hoagland, as Hawaii brought the roof here on this weekend's matchup against UCSD. And of course, don't forget Jakob Tella Hawaii's center. Tella with a couple of aces, 27 assists, excuse me, one ace, 27 assists, a couple of kills. He also contributed two blocks on the night as Hawaii and their fans celebrate senior night with a three set sweep. Welcome back to the Hawaii Honda Dealers post game show. Well, you see the large crowd, the fans, the uh, athletes all sticking around there looking up at the Jumbotron, at the senior video. What we're going to do right now is we're going to show you what they are seeing, and then we're going to come back and have some final thoughts and get you ready for the postseason, so don't go anywhere. My auntie and Tutu lived out here in Kailua, so they probably come out here once, twice a year, all the time. I could just see how beautiful the state was and everything like that. And I just kept wanting to come back here. Uh, sister played at UC Davis, and we'd come out here for every time they had a home game in Hawaii. So I got to see the stand environment too, and that was a real sight to see. And just seeing the fans, I was like, this is a really cool school. Like I've already, like I've been to other schools in California, just watching them play, and by far Hawaii was the best. Being on this team has taught me a lot, the culture and everything. Like you get here, and every person's like working as hard as they possibly can to be the best they can. I think that's why we've done so well in these last five years. It's just every person wants to be the best they can, and that pushes me, it pushes our teammates, and just be better at every aspect of the game. Born and raised here, I grew up on the island my whole life, so I kind of just had that thought that I wanted to go off and play on the mainland. So went to BYU for two years, and then COVID hit, and it, it just felt like the right decision to come home, and I haven't looked back. 
Um, it's been an amazing experience playing in front of the home fans. And there's there's really nothing like it. Nothing like the crowd support that the Aloha, the feeling of Aloha that the fans give us. It's not easy. It's a real grind. And practices are tough. Weights are tough, and matches are really tough. So, kind of just allowing myself to embrace those moments, embrace those challenges, and you continue to grow as a person as a result of those challenges. Being born and raised on this island, I think it's even more special because we're playing in front of our family, our ohana, our friends, you know, our teachers, our classmates, our aunties and uncles. So it just means all that more when you know, we can pull that win out, and it feels like it wasn't just the team that pulled that win out. Like it was. Seriously, everyone, anyone who's ever supported us is helping us get that win. I only knew Hawaii from like movies and videos and never been here before. Didn't know anything about the culture, about the history. When I saw the footage from the Stan Sheriff Center from the games and when I saw how many people go and watch, how popular volleyball is, then um, you know, I was all in. When I got here, I was really a cakey Philly. It took me a while to really um, get to know the culture, get to know the people. And uh, it took me a while to uh, embrace, to pick up that team culture as well. The team culture of uh, working hard, striving to be the, the best version of myself, to be the best uh, I can be to help the team. In Hawaii, what really makes it so different and so special is, is the community, is the culture, and it's, it's the people. And that's something I, I fell in love with. And I think that's something that really changed me. The way how people here in Hawaii care about each other, that's something that I haven't seen before. The team really feels like family. So that's something that I will for sure miss. And then also just being surrounded by the people um, that support our team. My freshman year was Stein, Dalton, Rosie, and Joe. And then the year after that was even a, it was like an even better class, you could say, with Rado, Pat, Colton guys. They kind of set down the, you know, the blueprints of how to become like a national champion or like how to have an elite program. So just seeing them there and seeing the work that they put in kind of like helped me like be the player I am today. I thought it was cool coming in, like I thought it was the best and then you get to here and then you see all these other players that are just older or just better in general. And uh, it's a very humbling experience. Taking that into like real life, you know, Everywhere you go, there's probably gonna be someone better than you and you just gotta work your tail off to get better than them. It's a wonderful experience playing in front of 10,000 fans on a sold out night. And coming from Hawaii, it's kind of a special feeling when you play for the state that you're born in and people wouldn't trust you with winning and going to grab national titles. I think I'm really gonna miss the boys, uh, playing in front of my family and friends and just the people overall in the, in the state and just people watching at home or you know coming to the game so i think i'm gonna miss those the most so it all started when i was uh, watching a youtube video uh, of a game here and i fell in love with the whole atmosphere the arena the crowd the team when i came here i was 18 years old i was a guy that never left greece before and you know making this step really really makes you mature and uh, it helped me a lot in different aspects of my life. I believe the only way to grow as a person is to get out of your comfort zone. And that's what, what I did. That's what many guys in our team did, like all the Europeans. To come here, it's pretty far uh, away from our families. I'll miss playing in this arena, of course, with all the fans. I'll miss all my teammates, all the people I met here. I appreciate every moment in life and uh, see the world, like open your mind and uh, just learn that there are more ways to do something that you want to know. Hawaii for me was uh, the, the place where I wanted to go and just hearing about um, how life was here and how much everything was like a family. I knew that there was no place I'd rather be than Hawaii. Going from Abrada to Nanko to Kupuna has definitely been um, a life-changing journey for me and it's been a dream come true and just living that dream every day pretty much both in practice, uh, academics, and life in general. Just really valuing all the relationships that I've had built with my teammates and friends and people outside um, as much as possible. It's just been an incredible journey. It's just the people that I'm gonna remember the most and the people that have had the most impact on me and also kind of made me see how important it is to inspire others and inspire the next generation to 
continue to build that legacy. If that is my teammates or kids watching the games um, or just people in general kind of seeing what I'm doing, I want to like, see them from my actions and what I do on the court and off the court that sticks to them and it's going to help them also. I'm going to miss everything. Uh, practicing early in the mornings, going to the beach with, uh, with my boys and yeah, hiking, just enjoying the nature and the beauty of beauty of Hawaii and for sure the people, but just everything that you, that you can do and live, island life, that's one thing I'm going to miss for sure. to say thank you to the players. The players just moments ago, as you saw, saying thank you to the fans. We'll take a break. We'll have more as Hawaii wins it in three. Welcome back to the Hawaii Honda Dealers post-game show. All right, let's take a look at the bracket brought to you by First Insurance Company of Hawaii. And it is all said, Hawaii and Long Beach State tie as co-champions of the regular season in the Big West. But Hawaii wins the tiebreaker. So Hawaii, the number one seed. Long Beach State, the number two seed in Hawaii's bracket. They'll play the winner of UCSB and UCSD. And for Long Beach State, they'll play the winner of UC Irvine and CSUN. And, you know, you, you look at the way things are set up this weekend. Uh, Irvine, Long Beach State played on. Obviously, Hawaii, UCSD, that four groups could be facing each other again on Friday. Yeah, we could see a repeat performance, but again, lucky for Hawaii, they're going to have at least one night to rest up, do more scouting, and, and have an opportunity to stay fresh going into that semifinal. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see to be on a neutral court as well, although I anticipate there to be a lot of local people uh, in the Orange County area coming out to support the Bulls. I agree, and Hawaii set themselves up in such a good position this year. I think they're going to be playing their best volleyball coming next week. We've seen them have a lot of highs, a couple of lows, but they all know, and talking to Jakob Teller last year, uh, last week, they're all in a good position. They all know what they have to do moving forward. They've been in this position in conference championship and hopefully national championship. Um, road away of them, and I think they're ready to do it. You know, you look at the Big West Conference, and it is the premier, I think, men's volleyball conference in the country. You have to go back to 2017, the last time a non-Big West team won an NCAA National Championship. Since then, it's been Long Beach State back-to-back, -back, COVID, Hawaii back-to-back, -back, and both those teams, obviously, national title contenders. You also have UC Irvine on the outside, and we talked to Charlie about the Big West in the NCAA. The Big West clearly has three teams deserving of playing uh, in the NC2A tournament. Uh, we have three in the top five, and it's a seven-field, seven-team event. Um, 
I think there's very little chance that we would get all three in um, this year. The tournament will have to expand a little bit. There is a pathway you could get into different scenarios where it could happen, but I ultimately I think it's highly unlikely. And just from the committee's view of giving one team or one league three teams, that means half of our league would make it and it'd literally take up half of the tournament. Um, I'm not sure they're ready for that yet. All right, for all of you who are planning on heading all the way to George Mason, all your information you need is right there. I'm sure it will also be uh, on the UH website, but the biggest thing is Selection Show. It is on NCAA.com a week from tomorrow at 7 a.m. Hawaii time. Once again, next Sunday, April 23rd. It's not on ESPNU or any of those channels. We have to go online, NCAA.com at 7 a.m. Hawaii time. So there are a number of teams that are vying to get to George Mason. Let's take a look at the top 10 in RPI. UCLA, Hawaii, Penn State, Long Beach State, the top four. You see Grand Canyon at number five. We were talking about the Big West. UC Irvine, they have a hill to climb. They're at number nine in the latest RPI. So the Big West bubble teams, of course, for the NCAA t tournament, you still got to add Hawaii and Long Beach State in there. And, of course, UC Irvine. So those three teams are vying should one of those three not win the Big West tournament. That's always a possibility uh, next week at Irvine. In the MPSF, BYU right there, UCLA, who Hawaii beaten for earlier this year. They're the top team right now. Keep an eye on Grand Canyon and Stanford with a little bit of an outside shot. But, of course, they have a postseason tournament as well. In the MIVA Ball State, who went last year and gave Hawaii hard rubs in that national quarterfinal. Uh, Ohio State, who knocked off Penn State earlier this year. And uh, Loyola Chicago with an outside shot also. And the EIVA in Conference Carolinas, you look at Penn State, they were upset last year. Keep in mind, they were upset by Princeton, and they did not receive in that large, even though they were, I think, ranked number three in the country. And North Greenville, who Hawaii played early, earlier this year uh, on the road out of Coastal Carolina, uh, Conference Carolina, has a shot. So those are all teams that are going to be vying for the two at large. The bottom line is, if you're Hawaii, you win the conference tournament, you're in, and more than likely you would think a number one seed. But we're talking about the Big West and a way of maybe the two at larges coming from the Big West. How would that happen, Ryan? I mean, I think the only real way is if there is just an extreme upset and a team that is not the one or two or Long Beach or Hawaii ends up winning the conference. And then you're looking at, uh, do you invite Hawaii or do you invite Long Beach and whoever makes it to the championship match? So crazier things have happened. We've seen it a few years back when Santa Barbara ended up winning uh, the MPS, uh, excuse me, the Big West tournament. Uh, so there are a number of scenarios that happens. I think for Hawaii, bottom line is, is they have to win. I, I think if they win on uh, Friday night, they pretty much punch their ticket. I don't see them not being invited to the NCAA Double Tournament. They're the two-time defending national championship. They've been the number one ranked team for the most of the season, uh, but they have to, I think, really solidify themselves by winning in the semifinal. And a point in, in point is, two years ago, Hawaii lost at home against UCSD in the Big West quarterfinal, yep. yet not only made the tournament, they were the number, number one, one seed. Yeah. They really were, and I think Hawaii set themselves up, like I said, all season. They're in a good position to be at that number one seed in the Big West tournament, and winning it, probably going to secure the number one seed in the national championship tournament. There's no doubt that this is one of the best teams in the country, but that being said, tournament play is different to regular season. Every, th every game counts, and we have seen in previous year some crazy upsets happen. They're going to have to keep their heads on their shoulders and just fight every single game moving forward. But I think the advantage for Hawaii is that they're the only one that has been there the last two years and walked away with the trophy. I think that is a humongous advantage in the postseason. It truly is, and it just speaks to that. Um, the experience that you've had being in that position, not your first time on a very big stage, pretty much everything that you've worked for all season at hands and at stake, being able to calm those nerves down, getting there for the first time. I remember in 2019, it's a little bit nerve wracking. This team's not only been there the past three years, they've won two of them. They're in a very good position because they have every single guy back that that's done in the past two years. I mean, yeah, that's a really good point because when you look at, you're looking at Jakob Tell here, here's a player 
whose every match, every season ending match has been a national championship match, right? His freshman year, yeah. they lose to Long Beach State in the national championship. Then he goes on and wins the next two. So his career has always gone to the championship match. There are few athletes that can boast that kind of resume that has that experience going into the postseason. And uh, say what you will, but that says a lot because being there, being there, done that, uh, that, that definitely will be a significant factor. I want to remind everybody Spectrum Sports will be on the road with Rainbow Warriors uh, next week in Irvine. We'll have both matches from Thursday. Hawaii will not be in that night of matches, but should be good entertaining volleyball. And then we'll have both matches for you on Friday. Ryan's going on. Up. I know James you're going up you'll try to probably make a, a cameo on camera I'm sure <laughs> probably will there's a little bit of a talk about it <laughs> <laughs> I'll be here for baseball I'm all right with that but it should be a lot of fun it's been another wonderful season so I'm gonna let both of you have a final word Ryan you're the uh, elder statesman. <laughs> What's your final I mean, thoughts? I'll keep it short. I mean, I think that this is a team that obviously has a lot going for them, and this is a team that is not done. Uh, and so I think there's a lot of volleyball to be had. And if anyone is in the Irvine area, I suggest that you come on down uh, next week and support this team. And then moving beyond, if you have anybody on the East Coast, I think this is a team that can once again go back to back to back. I will try to keep it short. <laughs> it <Impossible. was> <laughs> it's been an incredible season for this team, and it's just been fun to watch them grow as a team and get to this point. I think it's one of the most exciting years of volleyball in probably the past decade. There is so much going on across the country in this volleyball. So this Big West Championship, all the championships across the country, including the national championship, are probably going to be some of the most exciting volleyball that we've seen in the past couple years. But this team is something special. Watching them grow from their freshman year all the way to their senior year, they've done incredible things and things that are unheard of. And they're doing it at a very efficient state. It's super exciting to watch. And like Ryan said, if you guys are in that West Coast area, go out, support these Warriors. They're doing an incredible job, and it's a team that might not come for a couple more years in any kind of NCAA history. So that's your version of short? A yeah. little bit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I appreciate both of you guys. Outstanding job. Ryan, I'll see you again in August right. as we get right ready for corner. Rainbow Wahine Volleyball James. We'll see you around as well, and that'll wrap things up for us here on this special night. Special thanks, as always, to our multi-award-winning Spectrum Sports crew. They are the absolute best in the business. And for my broadcast partners, Ryan and James, I'm Scott. Until next time, bidding you aloha and a good evening from Simplify Arena at Stan Sheriff Center in 